come to a story with hopes and expectations, looking for an answer. Sometimes it would be better to live with that hope without ever knowing the full story. In a horror story, there are only victims and monsters. And the trick is not to end up as either. But trapped by the genre, we are all ripped to pieces along the way. This is not the story I hoped it would be. This is not the ending I wanted. This story will eat us alive. This story is a monster. And monsters wear many faces. Pretty God.
kiddo. How are you? I'm good, Mom. How are you? This trip might take a little longer than I thought. I'm sorry I've been gone so much lately, Logan. Oh my god, Mom. It's not your fault. People get all murdery. What happened? Just... work stuff. Right. Well, Dad and I are just watching the latest episode of Night Springs here. Mom, it's so good. No spoilers! I'll let you get back to the show. You were supposed to wait and watch with me. I love you both. This is what happens when you go on work trips, Mom. Love you too. And say hi to Casey. Tell him to stop brooding so much. Logan! I will. Bye, kiddo. Logan thinks you should try cheering up. <laughs> Snarky kid. Wonder where she gets that from. It can't be a coincidence that another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Feels like the killer's leaving us a message. Hmm. I'm glad you're on this case with me, Anderson. It's right up your alley. You should take lead. Think of me as the backup. Okay. Any words of advice? Nothing that would cheer anyone up. Here we are. Cauldron Lake. Time to get to work. A deputy was supposed to be here to show us to the crime scene. There's the car, so where's the deputy? <laughs> Eaten by a bear? I'll check out that map. I have things to do, and this is not the right way. Hey, over here. Hey there, Agent Casey, right? Sheriff Breaker said you'd be coming by to take over the case. You're half right. Anderson? Saga Anderson, I'll be leading this case. Seems you already know my partner, Alex Casey. Shoot. Sorry about that, ma'am. I'm Deputy Mulligan. I just figured that, you know, that, uh... Federal agents right here, Thornton. My partner, Thornton, <laughs> down at the crime scene. He's not what you call the sharpest axe in the shed. Right here? What do you mean? Are they with you? Oh, shit! They didn't hear me, did they?
What can you tell us about the crime scene? Tell them about the heart. I was getting to that, Thornton. <clears throat> well, we reckon there are some uh, organs that are currently outside the victim's person when they should be, well, you know, inside. Were there any witnesses? Yeah, a couple out-of-towners. I wonder what they were doing sneaking around the woods at night. Oh, mention the city folk. It's pretty suspicious. Not that we have anything against city folk, cried Thornton. But don't worry. Sheriff Breaker took them back to town a while ago. I want to see the body. How do we get there? Oh, sure, that's real simple. Just through the hole in the fence, down the hill towards the lake, around the old convenience store. You can't miss it. Everything's been closed since the area was fenced off. The store, the campground, all of it. Hey, Mulligan, tell them I'm here, Winky. I'll show them around. They got it, Thornton. Shut up, Thornton. They can still hear you. I'm just saying. You know I'm usually a calm person. Yoga, three times a week. But these goddamn city folk always think they know everything. It gets on my fucking nerves. Shut up. Shut up, shut up. Before we get to the crime scene, there's time to review the facts of the case so far. Make sure I'm seeing the clues clearly. I need to think through the facts of the case. The Mind Place. My version of the Mind Palace technique. To sift through clues and work the case. Building the Mind Place again for each case using each field office as a model in my head. The facts are on the board. Everything we know about the previous murders. Worth taking another look. See you're already hard at work, Anderson. Close to cracking it. 
We're just getting started. Let's head down the hill to the crime scene. Hey, Casey. You putting me in charge. Why now? Look, Anderson, you're a better detective than I am. You've cracked cases that had the rest of us bad. I don't want to slow you down. Are you thinking of retiring? You know what happens to cops who say this is their last case. Mm-hmm. Real funny, Anderson. I'll be back in a second. Roger. Stairs are out. You okay to jump down? I'm not that old. Uh, uh. I think I s It'll only take a minute. I'll wait. Is that a kid's lunchbox? An Alex Casey movie lunchbox. Casey hates the endless jokes about coincidentally having the same name as a fake detective. He hates those cheesy crime books, but he really hates the movies.
did you get? Not a bad place to get murdered. Hmm. If getting back to nature is your thing. I'll look around. See you in a bit. Take your time. Damn. Should have brought an umbrella. I like the rain. The only... You think the local law had the sense to put up a tarp? Hmm. <laughs> if they did, next coffee's on me. Hey! Deputy Thornton, I take it. That's me, at your service. Ready to get this case solved. A lunchbox again. Who's leaving these out here? Welcome back, Anderson. So, FBI, huh? That's so cool. Up and down psycho serial killers and shootouts with the mob. We forgot the UFO cover-ups. A creepy twig sculpture? Wonder what's inside. I should take a look around for a way to open this thing.
Hey there, Mr. Deer. You remind me of a dream I had. scene of the crime. We found him on the table, and we didn't touch nothing, you know, procedures and stuff. Thanks, Deputy. No tarp. You owe me a coffee. Okay. Let's start by examining our guest of honor. Does this fit the M.O. of the previous murders? Body is positioned on the table. Ritualistic. Another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Coincidence? Step one, examine the corpse. Bruising on the wrist from the cargo straps holding him down. The killer left the heart right next to the body. Inside stab wound, chest cut open, heart removed. <laughs> Heart removed from chest, strapped by the wrists. Definitely matches the previous murders. But this time, the heart and the straps were left behind. More clues to work with. This makes four murders that we know about. Who is our victim? Who killed him? Need to find more clues. Large amount of blood on the table. The victim died here. Multiple people were here. Multiple killers? Someone was drinking beer. They spent time here. Waiting. Someone left in a hurry. Knocked the tripod over. Was it for a camera? No. Boot prints indicating multiple killers. Quite the party.
any idea who the victim is? Oh, I sure do. His name is Nightingale. He was FBI. He came to town about 13 years ago. Now, I haven't heard a word about him since. Well, until now. Nightingale? Robert Nightingale? Oh, yes. You probably knew him. Brothers in arms. Oh, and sisters. So you knew our victim? Well, I didn't recognize him in his current state. But yeah, I ran into him a few times at Quantico. Never worked any cases together. After his partner got killed in the field, he went off the deep end. Got the boot pretty quick after that. Nightingale went missing 13 years ago. 2010. The same as all the other victims. Certainly fits the pattern. Makes me wonder what was going on that year. Probably something this town wants to forget. So what happened to Nightingale after the Bureau let him go? I only know the rumors. Depression led to booze, booze led to paranoia. He got some wild ideas in his head, chased ghosts until he fell off the map. Guess he ended up here. I bet there's more to that story. But no happy ending. I think that's everything. For now, at least. Mm-hmm. Anything clicking yet? Not sure. Need to think about it. Robert Nightingale, ex-FBI, came to Bright Falls 13 years ago. They planned for the murder to happen here, passing the time with equipment ready. They were waiting for him. But why Nightingale? He's been missing for 13 years. Why here? Why now? Profiling. Get into the subject's head. See what they saw. Feel what they felt. Use whatever I know about them to guide my intuition to a revelation. Piece it together. This mug always cheers me up. Agent Nightingale has been MIA for 13 years. How did he end up here? Up from the lake that's not a lake. It's dark. He was there too. You are not allowed in the lake until he says otherwise. Robert Nightingale came from the lake before his murder. Nightingale was chosen as the victim. Why? Flick the switch. It goes click. Lights are off. But somebody's home. Somebody's home. This wasn't some random act of violence. This was a ritual. And Nightingale a component. They didn't see him as a person. More like a container for something. The lake is connected to Nightingale somehow. Casey, let's take a look down by the lake. Lead the way. Sounds good. Uh, this is way, right? Right. Well, okay.
this one of your hunches, Anderson? Did something happen at the lake? I think Nightingale came up from that direction. From the lake. When you're ready, I'd love to hear what you put together so far. Sure. It's not that complicated. The killers knew he was here, ambushed him, dragged him to the campgrounds, strapped him to the table, cut his heart out. But then they were interrupted by those witnesses, the bookers. The job is unfinished. That seems pretty complicated to me. What was this guy doing skinny dipping at this time of year? I haven't figured that part out yet. Mm-hmm. Lots of questions. Lots of answers for us to find. I'll be back in a second. Roger. There's another lunchbox. I think I saw something. It'll only take a minute. I'll wait here. <clears throat> I didn't know trees got that big. A witch with no heart. A strange echo of Al murder. Hmm.
There's a piece of paper on the ground. Tracks. Barefoot. Nightingales? They come out from under the boulder. It makes no sense. A page full of text on one side. Not a printout. Written with a typewriter. Old school. Lines scratched out and edits added with a pen. Mm-hmm. Like a manuscript. Page of a story. Hmm. The killer left a message. It's for us. The text is about us. The victim was one of their own. FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale. And then there was a the page they found. The first step down into terrifying depths. Reading, Reading the, the words. words. These, These words, words felt, like a message. felt like a message. Someone knew they were here. Someone playing a game with them. An, An invitation. invitation. How, How could, could they, they not accept? accept even, even if they, they knew it would end, end up hurting, hurting them. them. Someone's been watching us. Playing a sick game with us. You were right. This is right up my alley. Nightingale came this way. Either he dropped this page, or the killers left it for us. We found a page in the woods. A story about these events. What is Nightingale's role in this? I carry his words close to my chest now. Inside. The awful truth. You must dig it out. Something was put inside him. In his chest. I must find out what. I think he came from the lake, but his tracks make no sense. Found all I can here. Time to properly examine the body. See what I can find inside. Casey. I think something's been put inside Nightingale's body. Let's tell the deputies to get the body to the town morgue. Okay. Whoever wrote that page made sure it read like a story. Like a scene from a thriller. I hate all of it. The text said we'd find more. I believe it. But what's the purpose? They're twisting events to create their own narrative. To do what? Entertain some fantasy? Projecting their desires? Are we characters or the audience? Witnesses to their design? All the above? It's all about control. Hey, you made it back. Deciding what Good. happens to who. Don't let it drag you in. Too late. I'm already hooked. I need the next chapter. I hope you didn't get stuck in any of those big puddles. Crazy flooding down there, huh? Just like I said. Deputy, I want the body taken back to town for a proper examination, ASAP. Well, sure, but the coroner won't be back in town for another week after Deerfest. Not a problem. I'll do it myself. Oh, and Sheriff Breaker called to say he's got the bookers at the Oh Dear Diner in town. Oh, and I've got a key to the gate. It's a shortcut back to the parking lot just up the hill. Thanks. 
Let's get the car. Drive to Bright Falls and talk to these witnesses, the bookers. At the diner, right? I, I could use a cup of coffee. Let's try that shortcut the deputy mentioned. Sounds good. Seems like a nice town so far. Burgess aside. Pretty woods. Cute lodge we got set up in. We should go for a hike if we get a chance. Now you're just being mean, Anderson. Deputies aren't exactly up to the task, but hopefully the sheriff will be more helpful. Not a surprise about the deputies. Doubt they see much stuff. I'll look around. See you in a bit. Take your time. <clears throat> Another one of those lunch boxes. Can't fit the clues all together yet. Heart removed, tripod, tracks leading to a dead end. A tripod? For a camera? To record a, a snuff film? Maybe. And why uh, take out his heart just to throw it away? To stuff in something for us to find. Here we are. Let's drive back to town and meet the sheriff at the diner. I can't get that manuscript page out of my head. I've never seen killers reach out so directly before. Damn impressive work so far. With your technique, these hunches were moving fast. I wasn't sure about taking a case so far from home, but I'm thrilled to be here for this mystery. Need to swing by the lodge to get anything from the field office? No, I'm all set. I'll park there anyway. I want to walk to the diner, get a feel for the town. The diner's just up the waterfront. Shouldn't keep the sheriff and our witnesses waiting. I smell coffee. Washington's finest.
I'm gonna go check something out. Be right back. Got it. Tweet, tweet, my sweet. You wouldn't do that. Jumping around like that, but scaring the poor the little thing. The passage of time is... Another Alex Casey lunchbox? Welcome back, Anderson. Nice to meet you, Sheriff. I'm set for coffee. You know, I wouldn't say no to another. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. This is Agent Alex Casey. Tim Brinker. And let me just say, I'm happy you two are here. Frankly, we could use the help. Your deputies said you had a couple of witnesses here. They made them sound like suspects. Mulligan and Thornton are still on about that? No. No, the bookers don't strike me as the murdering type, but you can decide for yourselves. They're just inside having coffee and pie to calm their nerves. I'll see what they have to say. Casey, you compare notes with the sheriff. Take your time. We've looked through the case files you sent over, Sheriff. Have you had many people besides the known victims go missing? Sure. But it's slowed down ever since Cauldron Lake was fenced off. Let me guess. Missing person cases spiked around 2010. The fence was built just after. Yeah, that's exactly right. Hmm. You can go ahead, Anderson. We'll be here. I can't believe that happened. I still feel like I'm gonna be sick. Come on, Ed. Have some pie. Don't take your mind off things. Excuse me. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. Are you the bookers? That's us. I'm Tammy, and he's Ed. Hello, officer. Just Saga is fine, Ed. So, are we being charged with anything? Because if not, we'd love to get back to our hotel and decompress after what we saw. Take a bath, screw into pillows, that kind of thing. We're not charging you. I just have a few questions. Nothing to stress about, okay? So what did you see in the woods? This naked dude came out of the lake, and he was acting crazy, shouting weird shit at us. He must have been on something. Unless skinny dipping at dawn is a thing around here. Then we heard shooting. We ran into these psychos in deer masks. They were cheering into the naked guy with knives, like some kind of satanic cult. And then we bolted and called the cops. What were you doing at Colgen late last night? I'm a writer. True crime. We're here from New York, doing some research on a famous novelist, Alan Wake, who went missing here. I was down at the lake, getting some details. Perfectly legal. What makes you say it was a cult? <laughs> the masks and knives aren't enough. Yeah. They were shouting, Cult of the tree. The cult of the tree. Cult of the tree. Oh, oh. and then we found it. <laughs> the whole thing was terrifying. That's all. Hello. of the tree. What are the bookers telling me? I found their necklace. The symbol is two triangles. The cult wants their spruce tree bag, Tammy. Finders keepers, Ed. My publisher will want this on the cover. Tammy found something. A necklace belonging to one of the cultists. 
The bookers were at Cauldron Lake. Why? This was built to hide what's there. They say the rider fell in the lake. Private party. No trespassing. My book has questions. Past the bolt cutters. They broke in for the sake of Tammy's book. Nothing to do with a murder. They were telling the truth. Finding a Casey movie lunchbox out here can't be a coincidence. Another message? Doesn't make sense. We're dealing with an organized group of killers, not a lone serial killer. I need to know more about the code of the tree if I'm going to shut them down. These stashes could contain clues about the cult. Better keep an eye out for more. Okay. Take it easy. Types can be. Hello. So you found something there, right? A necklace these cultists may have dropped. Okay. Wow. How did you put that together? It's evidence. You need to hand it over. Okay. Okay. Told you not to keep that thing to me. Thanks. This could prove to be helpful. Do me a favor. Stick around town for now in case we have any more questions. 
like we'd even dream of missing dear Oh, God. Saga! Saga Anderson. As I live and breathe. I thought we'd never see you back here after that awful, awful thing happened to your baby girl. How are you? Um, I'm sorry. Who are you? I don't know what you're talking about. It's me, silly. Rose. You know me. I don't think I do. And what horrible thing happened to my baby girl? She drowned. Your daughter. That's so weird. You don't remember. How do you know I have a daughter? Oh, I know what this is. You're blocking out your traumatic memories. Happens on TV all the time. No. You're mistaking me for someone else. <laughs> if you say so. Set. My guys have Nightingale at the morgue if you're ready to go take a look. Let's go. Well, Casey, I got a lead. Looks like we're dealing with a cult. The cult of the tree. A murder cult. Fuck. Have you heard of this cult of the tree, Sheriff? Only the urban legend. If you're in the woods at night, the cult will get you. That sort of thing. We're not gonna find out you're the Grand Wizard or something, are we? Played some D&D back in the day. Wizard was always my favorite class. Morning, Sheriff. Looks like you have some guests. Ah, uh, morning, Ted. Yeah, real important guests. Deerfest. Always draws a crowd, right? <laughs> Too true. More the merrier. Have a good one, Sheriff. Hey, what do you know about that waitress from the diner? <laughs> Rose? Yeah, she's a bit of a space case. Always has been. Why? What'd she do now? She kept saying that my daughter drowned. She even knew my name. It was all very weird. Rose has a talent for saying the weirdest thing possible. But it's best not to take it personally. Hey, boss. The corpse is downstairs ready to go. Yep. In the morgue, all prepped. I'd like to take a closer look as soon as possible. Lead the way, Sheriff. Oh, this is the Bright Falls Sheriff Station. Anything you need, just uh, let us know. We appreciate the support, Sheriff. I'll be right with you, sir. Yep, yep. Just here to pay my ticket whenever you're ready to take my money. Have a nice day. Agent? As you know, the investigation is being taken over by the federal agents. Sheriff Breaker wants us to cooperate fully. Aye, aye, ma'am. I'm being serious, Nelson. Oh, dear. I am a tourist, and it appears that I'm lost in the woods. You've only had a tour guide, also. Spare season. Oh no, a bear. Help. Did somebody call for a tour guide? Oh wow, Koskala Brothers Adventure Tours. Unforgettable tour experiences at affordable prices. That's right, I'm Ilmo Koskala voted best coffee roaster slash tour guide by Coffee World Magazine. And I'm here to give you the tour of a lifetime. But Ilmo, I've heard the government has seized and restricted access to many local nature attractions. 
That is true, Yanko. Many local attractions have recently become fenced off by the government. And that's why, at Koskala Brothers Adventure Tours, we say, fuck the government. We have bolt cutters. Oh, wow. You think of everything. And we'll take you anywhere. Hiking through the scenic Elderwood National Park. Fishing in the crystal clear waters of Bright Falls Dam. Bird watching at Majestic Mirror Peak. The tour of a lifetime is just one phone call away. Book now to get a 9% discount on this limited edition Oh Dear Diner Coffee Thermos. So we share a morgue with the funeral home next door. It's a shoestring budget. I guess you guys don't have that problem, though. Our only coroner rotates between a few other towns, and he's away this week. But you can handle this, right? I'm qualified to perform examinations. Yes. Something about morgues. They always cheer me up. I can't say I feel the same. He's joking. Okay, let's take a look at our patient. I'll start with the external inspection before performing the internal examination. What was the cause of death? What other clues can the body give me? There's writing on here. Can't make it out. Writing? How'd they manage that? The body shows signs of being submerged in water post-mortem. It doesn't add up. This looks like text. A tattoo? Nightingale didn't strike me as a tattoo guy. Defensive wounds. They put up a fight. Aha. Uh -huh. They did leave something inside his chest. Time to see what Nightingale's body can tell us. Doesn't make sense. Chest wound is cause of death, but the corpse is bloated, waterlogged. There's definitely something in his chest. Did the killers leave it there? Same type of page we found at Cauldron Lake. Nightingale haunted Saga. Didn't see her. The Taken could not see into bright light. Light hurt them, made them vulnerable. Nightingale had no heart, but here he was. Killing. Someone's created a fucked up fantasy about us. Hey, hold on. We found these kinds of pages. I didn't think they were relevant to this case. I have them right here. No, 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 wait! Shit. 
sheriff? What the hell? Show me the clicker. My gun's out in the hall. Gotta get it back. My gun's out in the hall. Gotta get it back. Go! He didn't have a heart, but he still got up. The page predicted all of it. It helped me fight him. Oh, oh, oh. He, he just disappeared? What the hell is going on here? We need to figure that out if we're going to do anything about it. Somehow we need to make sense of this. There is no rational explanation to what we just saw. I'd love to blame this on mass hallucination caused by inhaling volcanic gas, but we both know that's bullshit. This was supernatural. Well, I'm glad you were the one to say it. Now we can figure out a way forward. The victim of a ritualistic murder turns into a monster. Is there a connection? Looks to me like the cult of the tree is performing rituals to create monsters. Hmm, maybe. We need to start with learning this cult's goal. Their purpose. Right before things got crazy, Sheriff Breaker just vanished. Maybe the Sheriff knew more than he was letting on. Hmm. He seemed anxious, like he dreaded what was coming. One more mystery. There's one of the pages on the floor. Saga was back at Cauldron Lake. Saga had to pursue Nightingale into the overlap. Finding a way in would be difficult. A ritual. Saga would learn how. Stop the monster.
The cult of the tree is behind these murders. This case just became much more complicated. I'll need to start a new file. But it's my first cult case. Exciting. Killers are usually the ones performing the ritual, not the detective. Acting out their sick fantasy. They may be trying to get you involved, forcing you into their twisted world. Must be locked from the other side. Saga was back at Cauldron Lake. He was there too, Nightingale. Was, but wasn't a taken, a creature of darkness. He was beyond her reach, where some other strange reality, the Dark Place, merged with ours. This place and the Dark Place, a tarp thrown over top, drowning everything beneath it, a flood of darkness, soaking into everything, spoiling it, rotting it. The page called this area an overlap. Saga had to pursue Nightingale into the overlap. Finding a way in would be difficult. Required precise steps, a ritual. Saga would learn how. Stop the monster before he killed again. Her job, he'd be inside, waiting for her.
The Mile High Strangler case. Proud of that one. Too. Did the fucker take it with him? Can't be opened on this side. If only the rest of the Bureau knew what a softy Casey is. Saga had lost count of how many shots she'd fired, but she was sure it must have been more than she had in her magazine. And yet, she'd not run out of ammo, as if the magazine had grown to fit more bullets. She fired again. Miss you, kiddo. I'll be home soon.
dead man turned into a monster. Light as a way to fight him. Pages predicting the future? There's no rational explanation. This is the case we must solve. The page places Nightingale back at Cauldron Lake. Calls him a Taken. We need to head over there, stop him, before anyone else gets hurt. Okay. We, we heard gunshots, y'all okay? Did you get spooked by the bodies? Sheriff Breaker disappeared. Nightingale turned into some sort of a monster, and there are offices down. You two handle things here. We need to get back to Cauldron Lake immediately. Fuck me. That's terrible. We'll do what we can, man. That's crazy, right, Thornton? Nightingale's heart was missing. How can you do that? They're a fine pair. My client has been held here long Nightingale enough. and his cult are dangerous. Are speak to them or not? We need to be prepared I, in case things escalate more than they already Sam have. Will be right with you. Can you call it in, Casey? A smart choice, Anderson. Yeah, A Agent Casey here. Yeah. We need backup. The Bright Falls case. Whoever you can spare. ASAP. Think we'll actually find Nightingale at the lake? The pages haven't been wrong yet. We can't assume the person writing these pages isn't playing us. I agree. But it's our best lead. Mercetta won't roll over on the issues. <sighs> Rinse and repeat. Clock out, get a beer. Or maybe three. I need to come clean, Anderson. I know why Nightingale was here 13 years ago. He was chasing a writer, Alan Wake. Tammy mentioned him. She's writing a book on his disappearance. You know the detective character from his books, Alex Casey. Yeah, I've heard the jokes at the office. Cold case Casey. Murder case Casey. <laughs> Sorry. Ha uh, ha. Uh, the same name, similar job. It's the first thing anyone thinks of. It annoyed me, but that was it. Then, ten years ago, I started getting strange letters in the mail. Fragments of prose describing murders. You've heard the stories about what happened in New York. Some of it, at least. Bodies started to pile up. It was a murder cult. Turns out the fragments sent to me were from the crime books of Alan Wake. 
The cult was copycatting the murders from the books. In their heads, they were performing a ritual to bring Wake back. Their imagined prophet. After that case, I started looking into Wake's disappearance on the side. And you thought this case might be connected to him? His name does keep popping up. I just wanted you to have all the facts. Next time, give them to me before we find ourselves in the middle of a horror story. The page says Nightingale's in something called an overlap. Need to figure out exactly what that means. I'm happy I'm not in charge of this mess. Thanks. Let's start looking for Nightingale where he was killed. The writer of these pages knows what will happen. Because they're behind this, or because they can see what's coming. Impossible things are happening here. A world operating on different rules. I need to understand this strange logic. To see the clues. To solve the case. <clears throat> I've been thinking more about the cult of the tree. What sort of cult refers to themselves as a cult? In my experience, they don't. We're hey, not seeing the full picture there. yet. How are you folks doing? Those restricted Hello, Saga Anderson. Are you two supposed to be here? I'm Ilmo Koskela. Fantastic to meet you. And yes, Stephen here hired me to show him through the woods. He's in town on important government business. Fixing this impressive piece of hardware. I work for the FBC, ma'am. I'm authorized to be here. And I bet you two are here about that murder. Nasty stuff. How's it going? How did you hear about the murder, Ilmo? Do you know anything that could help us? People tend to tell me things. The Koskala brothers are kind of a household name around here. Speaking of, uh, if you're looking for some fun, stop by Watery. Just down the road from Bright Falls, there's our Coffee World Amusement Park. There's Sauna, Sauna de Vista. <laughs> and we offer a variety of guided tours, hunting, fishing, hiking, whatever strikes your fancy. You name it, we probably got it. What is this thing? It's just a monitoring station, ma'am. The Federal Bureau of Control checks volcanic activity and air toxicity levels. No need to worry, though. It's mostly for research purposes. That's one gorgeous wetter saga. <laughs> Looks Nordic. I bet a family member made it. Stephen, we're investigating a murder that occurred nearby. What can you tell me about your bureau? Nothing that isn't classified, I'm afraid. But I don't know anything about a murder. Operations here are run by a different department. I'm just here to make some repairs. The wiring on this thing frays every couple months. Yep, that's the raccoons. They grow real big here with teeth like you wouldn't believe. Can not right through a garbage can. My mother made this sweater for me. How do you know? I knew it. My mom used to knit those sweaters for me and my brother. Watery, my hometown, was founded by Finnish immigrants. So between your name and the sweater, I figured your family might be from Finland too. Suomi, Finland. Ulla, Karjalan Close. My mom's family is from Sweden originally. I don't know much about them beyond that. The sweater is just something to remember her by. That's all for now.
I'd be happy to get you VIP tickets into Coffee World. Just say the word. Thanks. But I don't drink coffee. We brew our own beer, too. Ahma beer. Oh, now we're talking. Let's get to the murder site, Casey. A lot of things about this case keep bothering me. But one thing feels really off. Breaker's disappearance. I don't get the feeling Nightingale was responsible. Hmm. He was about to give you more of those pages. Something didn't want us to have them? Or was protecting him from Nightingale? Spontaneous combustion? I don't know. I... Not the kind of disappearance we normally solve. Our crime scene's drowning. I never minded rain. It feels like hope. No sign of a nightingale. But the page did place him at Cauldron Lake, in an overlap. So how do we follow him there? Maybe something around here will tell us. We've seen this symbol before. Hmm. Good eye. Bare feet. Nightingale. I'll see where these footprints lead. Can you come through the crime scene one more time, KC? Just in case? On it. If anything comes up, I'll radio you. Monsters? Overlaps? Rituals? What do you make of all of this? Hmm. The killers are usually the ones performing the ritual, not the detective. Acting out their sick fantasy. They may be trying to get you involved, forcing you into their twisted world. But with dead men coming alive, the word ritual starts to have more weight behind it. We need to look around, learn what this ritual is. After we find Nightingale, what then? I've never arrested a monster. I've watched you arrest plenty of monsters, Anderson. You know what I mean. Monster monsters. Light worked against him at the morgue. That might be the only way to stop him from hurting anyone else. The tracks lead into the water. Where'd he go from here? I can feel something. A presence. Nightingale isn't far. I know Nightingale is somewhere around Cauldron Lake. The tree was a threshold. This place and the dark place. Threshold, like a doorway, leading to Nightingale. It's somehow connected to a tree, which is ladle.
What is that? Seems like it's really... These aren't the same tracks that were here before. They're headed into the tree, not out of it. My flashlight burned the dark stuff away. It was covered... The fuse was in place. Saga stepped into the witch's hut. Inside, a bright light. There were objects that stood out to Saga, as if the light had manifested them. The witch's hut. Okay. I trust the pages to lead me to the overlap. This is the witch's hut. The page described the hut being lit and mentioned a fuse. something in the woods probably just a deer but i'm gonna check it out okay i found another page following up on a lead keep checking in Blood. this fuse is busted this one looks good people should really stop littering though page making progress the image of the witch in the sign saga addressed the witch the smudged line on the heart the second part recited from memory i brought you the heart witch show me the terror saga pushed the heart through the hole in the sign Don't need to go over all this again. The page from the witch's hut seems to be describing some kind of ritual. Doesn't make sense. To get into the overlap, I need to find Nightingale's heart. Read the line imprinted on it, plus the line on the page to the witch's ladle sign. Then push the heart through the hole in the sign. Nightingale's heart disappeared from the morgue. Where is it now? Nightingale's heart to get to the overlap. Where is it? The pages leaned close. He was there, but he was risen. Nightingale was there. The opposite of sunspots. Who said that? That's not it. I don't have what I need to find Nightingale's heart. There must be more. Nightingale's heart. 
Where is it? While they played cards in the general store, the witch had stolen his heart. Get out of my house. Nightingale's heart is at the general store, in a fridge. I need to check the general store for the heart. Casey, I'm headed to the general store. I think I know how to get into the overlap. Uh, roger that. I followed some ATV tracks in the woods and got a bit turned around. Did you get lost? I've only been lost once in my life, Anderson. The years I spent with my ex-wife. I'll find my way back, don't you worry about it. text on the heart is clearer now. Legible. I feel like I recognize this. The fridge. The heart. I knew it would be here. Like I saw it in a dream. And now I need to give the heart to the witch. Makes total sense. Sounds literary, but what does it mean? Found the heart in the fridge, just like the page said I would.
Casey, there are cultists in the area. They're taken, like Nightingale. Watch yourself out there. Yeah, thanks for the heads up. I'm still finding my way back. You have the worst sense of direction. <laughs> Any city in America I can get through drunk and blindfolded. It's these damn trees. Okay, okay. I'm en route to Witch's Ladle. I need to perform a ritual to open the overlap. This case just keeps getting weirder. But it is exciting. Job saga. Now keep moving. crashed on the far side of the mirror. I brought you the heart witch. Show me the terror. in the overlap. Are you still on your way? Casey! Casey, do you read me? Mom. Logan? Mom, help. Logan! Where are you? What the fuck was that? Logan's back in Virginia. You're imagining things. Need to find Nightingale. Nightingale. Trapped here. Your 
escape. Danger. Who is that? It's like they're coming in over a bad signal. Nightingale's badge. Lake. Yes, I'm at Cauldron Lake. 
Where are you? I to escape. In danger. The dark presence. Danger. Thanks. Got it. Are you okay? Oh, no! It's my fault! It got out with my face! Scratch! Sir, calm down. I'm gonna need you to take a breath. He's... he's changed the story. The dark presence. We must stop it before... Easy now. First things first. What's your name? My name is Alan Wake. I'm a writer. I, I've been... Wake? Where did you come from? You've been missing for 13 years. 13? sudden the radio stopped working and then that flooding just disappeared crazy forest is this who i think it is casey say hello to alan wake mr wake this is special agent alex casey he'll escort you to our car casey i'll meet you there right after i take a look around if the flooding's receded there might be evidence we missed earlier okay see you there Alex Casey, how am I still? Is this the dark place? No, it can't be. I got out. Yeah, the PI from your books has the same name as me. Another minute. Cauldron Lake. I thought I'd never see this place again. Take your time. Should look around. No, these woods aren't the same. With the flooding gone, could be further clues out there. Uh, the flooding disappeared very suddenly. I wonder if there's any connection to the overlap to Nightingale. A locked box. Is that the cult of the tree symbol on it? Notes and ammo. Looks like they're tools of the trade. The cult doesn't see their victims as people.
The cult is leaving supplies around for themselves. There's something written here. A poem? Or a riddle? Reminds me of the nursery rhymes I read to Logan when she was little. A little clothespin doll. Perfect weird souvenir for Logan. Something feels different. I should look around. It'll go great on the bracelet Logan made for me. Huh. That was strange. Gotta keep an eye out for more of these rhymes.
another one of those rhymes. Rest easy, buddy. a weird feeling something's changed what is this this is ridiculous Another charm for my bracelet.
we've reached the car, Anderson. How's it going down there? I think I'm done here. I'll meet you at the parking lot. More of those kids' lunchboxes. There's a rhyme over here. Another charm. Good thing Logan made me this bracelet. Sure. 
Another locked box. box. To Saga, with a heightened survival instinct kicking in, it seemed like she had just squeezed down the trigger of her pistol once as the Taken was coming closer and closer, but the gun kept firing again and again faster than possible like she was rapidly pulling the trigger.
You ready to go? Mr. Wake, we're taking you back to our field office in Bright Falls. You can freshen up there, and then we'll talk properly. Before you say anything, I'm totally fine. Don't freak out. Dad shouldn't have even texted you. Logan? No one texted me. What's going on? I'm totally fine. I slipped. That's all. God, it's not the end of the world. Put your father on the phone. Um, okay. Dad, it's Mom. Don't worry, hun. Logan slipped in the shower and bumped her head. She has a slight concussion, but... I'm keeping an eye on her. Lucky I heard her fall. She could have drowned. Jesus, David. Why didn't you call? I tried. It didn't go through. She's fine, really. But what about you? You sound stressed. No, it's, uh... Just a weird case, that's all. Well, if you need a hint, my years of board game victories tell me... Colonel Mustard did it. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep an eye out for him. <laughs> Love you, Dave. Love you too, honey. Wanna say bye to Logan? Just tell her I love her. Bye for now.
Is there anyone you'd like us to reach out to, Mr. Wake? You've been gone a long time. No. No. If they'd be in danger, it'll come for me. Okay, let's talk about something else. Robert Nightingale. Do you know him? You were both here in 2010. The Dark Presence got him back then. That's the last time I saw him. 13 years. Oh, fuck me. Tell us about the pages. You had what looks like a title page with you. Return. Is this the name of the story on these pages? The writer's name has been scratched out pretty violently. But your name can still be made out underneath. <laughs> scratched out. Yeah. Scratch. Did you write these pages, Mr. Wake? I'm trying to remember. It's... It's... It's a crazy jumble, like... A, like a nightmare. I, it doesn't... It doesn't make sense. I remember. I remember. Waking up in places with no memory of how I'd gotten there. It was out of control. I didn't need another mugshot in the fucking tabloids. Had I already done the show? Was that a recording? I felt a strange pull toward the TV. Good to see you, Alan. Uh, uh, this must be an exciting time for you. Tell me, does it ever get old? Sorry, does what get old? Publishing a new book. Are you okay there, my friend? You look like you've been cooped up in the writer's room for a few too many years. <laughs> this is exactly how I feel. <laughs> you know, I've waited so long to get my hands on the sequel to Departure. You left us on quite the cliffhanger. We've all been dying to know what it's not a lake, it's an ocean really means. You and me both. Well, our wait is over. Your new book, Initiation, hits the shelves tomorrow. What? That's exactly what every reader will be asking. This book is mind-bending. It's so cerebral. I mean, how would you describe it? A an auto-fictional thought experiment? A, a, a horror story? A postmodern detective story? Wait. This isn't right. I, I haven't written anything. 
He's so humble. Okay, you got me. Good prank, very funny. But yeah, I uh, sad to say, I, uh, I've not written this. Uh, I'd remember if I'd written a book, right? Or maybe it was written by your evil double. Well played, man. That is spot on. Playing the role here. Pretending the world of the book overlaps our own. That's very meta indeed. You see, Initiation tells the story of a fictional writer named Alan Wake, who is trapped in a nightmare, desperately trying to find the manuscript of a novel he has forgotten he has written. The book is set in New York, but it might not be New York at all. He is tormented by his dark doppelganger and guided by visions of a fictional detective he has written that's right alex casey is in this book as well uh, i guess we'll just keep doing this the whole show the joke's on me but isn't that what you sign up for with auto fiction no but seriously i found the uh, the structure of the reality you build in the book fascinating it reminded me of the matrix i mean the writer is physically in his writer's room trapped there and he projects himself out to this dark dream of New York through the story he is writing. Uh, like astral projection. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Go on. I should be taking notes here. Uh, this is great stuff. Notes to that other Alan Wake in that room writing this as we speak? Are we all in your story, Alan? No, I, I, I wish you every success with your new book, Alan. I hope it's as successful as your best-selling Alex Casey series. Initiation hits the shelves tomorrow. After this, I'm sure we'll all be eagerly awaiting the culmination of this Hero's Journey trilogy of yours. A book called Return, perhaps. <laughs> Man, thank you for one of the strangest interviews of... My entire career, Alan. All this talk of meta narratives. I have to expect them to disappear once this scene ends. Hello? I'm losing it. Something's not right here. I needed to get home to Alice. What the hell was that interview? Some kind of joke? Initiation? I never wrote a book called Initiation. This felt like a bad dream. Could make a good horror story. of a memory surfaced about writing here for countless days. A plot board for mapping out a story. On the index cards, the nightmare that just happened to me. A summary of the story so far. But other notes as well. Warnings. I had written them. I couldn't remember what it all meant. The name Scratch filled me with dread. I could trust these words. I had to act on them. You must write to escape.
I didn't remember much, but I knew my thoughts and ideas could manifest as reality in this dark place. I'd use my writing to project myself out of this room, like a deep sea diver to go deeper and explore the depths of this prison for a way out. This room was my boat. Writing was my lifeline. I would start again at the talk show. Detective in the film series. And of course, we have Alan Wake here. Best selling writer, the books, the films are based on. Let's do this! Welcome back to the show. So, Alan, as the uh, creator of the character, how do you feel about this? Sorry, what? Well, I know it can be an awkward question with the man sitting right next to you, but I mean, how do you feel about him in the role of Casey? Does he look the part to you? Uh... <laughs> he looks exactly like I always imagined Casey to be. It's uncanny. Thank you. That means so much to me. I'm a huge fan of your books. So, uh... What's the problem, Alan? Because on more than one occasion, you voiced your reservations about the adaptations. Uh, it's not that. They're their own thing. They've gone with choices that are different from mine. I, I, I feel protective about my stories, and these adaptations... I, I don't know. I, I guess I just wish I could have been more involved in making them. Well... In that case, you won't have seen this either. We have a clip from the new film, Murder Case Casey. Should we roll it, or do you want to say something first, Sam? Nah, just roll it. This city was an old scar that refused to heal. The rain made it fester. It needed the sun, but there was only the night. I was tired. Insomnia covered me like a plastic film. I was watching the world through a rain-slick window, my own reflection haunting the view. I was trying to track down the missing writer. My only clue was a table lamp shaped like an angel, the only thing to shed light on this sordid mystery. Great. Murder case, Casey. Great job, Sam. Very exciting and very meta. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Wait, stop. What was that about a writer? About a lamp? Hello?
There was something here. A broken transmission I couldn't quite make out. What was that? A message? Impossible to say. Tom. Oh, not so much evil that not a bit of good as well. Not one without the other. <laughs> good to see you. Hey, I, I can't seem to find my way out of here. Can you point me to the exit? <laughs> of course, Tom. The work will instruct its maker. I was gonna get something from the basement for you, but you can get it yourself now. Uh, the more cooks, the worse the soup. <laughs> Have we met before? Are you trapped in the dark place too? You remember Ahti, the janitor. You can't be lost if you don't worry about where you are headed. So don't worry, Tom. The sun will shine even into a heap of twigs. Just remember to turn on the lights. It won't take long when you get to work. What do you want me to get from the basement? A and my name's Alan, not Tom. Yeah, yeah, but I got a man's. A man, but a man with a tool makes two, Tom. Agree? <laughs> and a man with a tool can build his own exit. It's in a shoebox. In the basement where you left it. <laughs> Safe as in the Lord's purse. Here's the key. I've been trying to find a way to escape the dark place. Any suggestions? He who mulls about his troubles is the prisoner of his troubles. It's not easy to get out. But don't you worry, Tom. The home is still there where the heart is. I often think about it when I mop the floor and look into the puddle. Water is the memory of the world. Water finds its way. The janitor was a bit out there, but still a friendly face. I had to trust the basement would get me out of here. lamp and a shoebox. Was this what the janitor had left for me? The lamp felt significant. A tool for bringing light to the darkness. I felt a magnetic pull between the lamp and the light overhead. Whoa! When the light jumped into my lamp, the whole room changed, like something in a dream. 
opening a way forward. The lamp was humming. The bulb glowed. It held the light now. I felt another surge from the lamp. I could use it again. The glow in the lamp went out, shifting the light in the room. The light carved out something new from the darkness. I needed to find another way out.
police wants to drown me. I'm losing myself. I have to fight it. I have to remember the clicker, the light switch. I lost it, but I have the lamp now. The lamp the switch was cut from. This place is a nightmare. Not real and yet more real than anything. The danger and the horror are real. It feeds off my mind, twisting whatever it takes into psychotic reality. I'm trapped here. I write to escape. I've tried this many times, written countless stories, forgotten how many. I keep failing, but I must keep trying. I use the story to dive deeper. Every word I write is a step forward on this spiral in the darkness. I dive to the body to find the answer, the, the map, the key, the compass. It's combined to form a door leading out. But how do you open a door that's not a door? At the bottom of an ocean, that's not an ocean. And a lake, that's not a lake. <laughs> phone was ringing. Somehow I knew the call was for me. Hello? Hello, Wake? Yes. Do you know who I am? No. Who is this? We'll get to that later. There are spies all over. Shadows. A sense of deja vu washed over me. Had I had this conversation before? Helen, listen to me carefully. Caldera Street Station, the subway. You need to go there. I'll call you again later. Make sure to pick up. Do I know you? I, I know you from somewhere. You've just forgotten again. We're in this together. Don't worry. I got it now. We've been working. Great. I I'm losing you. Hello? Hello? <laughs> The man had said Caldera Street Station. I had to go there. on the page. What the hell? Oh, hey. 
Hey, we met at Door's show. Alan Wake, the writer. I'm Alex Casey. I'm looking into a murder. Come on, what? What is this? There's a piece of evidence, a manuscript of a novel. You wouldn't know anything about it? A manuscript? What manuscript? I need to see it. Rumor had it the manuscript contained the details of the murders. A murder cult was following the story to commit their gruesome acts. Was Wake their leader? Had he written it? How far would he go to create a perfect work of art? Or would he be the next victim? This was an echo of the books I had written for years. Picking up Casey's gun felt like I was assuming the role of the detective. I had a light now. I could use it to make my way deeper. resonated with meeting. Had I written this? The alley in darkness now. Restless shadows block my way. didn't. They were trying to stop me. With the gun and flashlight, I could fight back. The flashlight
flight had done its job. The Caldera Street station sign was there, but the entrance was missing. I had to make it appear. Maybe I could use the lamp to reveal the station entrance.
gates to the platform were closed. I had a ticket. Something about the station platform felt significant. It would work in my writing, but I needed more. Something lingered here. A half-forgotten memory. An echo. the shadows he'd gone missing presumed dead the cult was leaving me clues to follow connecting the dots from one murder to the next inviting me to draw an obscene picture on the city map caldera street station the name made me think of the exit wound of a bullet i had a flash of inspiration the ghost of my fictional detective a story thread i could use in my writing I had a location. I had a story thread. I would put them together, write them into my story to create a path deeper into the dark place. Things clicked into place. The story rang true. I was making progress. The dark place reacted to my story. The way into the tunnels was no longer blocked. The tracks led into the tunnel. That was my way forward. The blood trail continued deeper into darkness. Tunnels were a maze. The blood trail led me on.
Another place to use in this story. I needed to search the tunnels for further visions. Inspiration for the story that would lead me deeper. The new scene I had found was important for the story. That changed the story. And with that, the dark place changed. The Federal agent had come here looking for answers. All he found was a fate worse than death. It's bad luck to be on this case. The cold can get you anywhere with that black magic shit. Let the day shift handle it. What happened, anyway? Some fed came looking for the cult, but it was a trap. A satanic blood sacrifice. Anyone who gets involved with the cult, they're next. I heard their leader is this famous writer, Alan Wake. Their unholy motherfucking messiah. Sounds like a load of bull. The blood trail disappeared under the rubble. I had a feeling something was waiting there. Another echo lingered here, a source of inspiration. Word is your research can help me, ma'am. What do you know? There's more than one urban legend about the cult of the word. The murder cult used these tunnels for their ritual sacrifices. They say the cult reenacted the murders in Alan Wake's crime books. That Wake was even involved somehow under a false identity, Mr. Scratch, which is, of course, a nickname for the devil himself. It was disturbing finding myself in the story this way. But I was desperate, and it felt right for the story. Alan Wake, the story is a monster. I I had a new idea, a new story thread. I had to be at the scene, to see and understand it. making my way deeper into the story. I could imagine this murder cult performing their macabre acts beyond the collapsed tunnel. The cultists laid the Casey novel onto the altar with reverence, their twisted Bible.
shit, shit! The scene changed with the story. The water was gone. The way forward was open. Someone was humming. Was it worth the risk to go see who?
faded like a dream. I must hold on to it. I remember an awful beacon in the darkness, a scene of a ritualistic murder site in the subway tunnels. Is it a previous draft of my writing? Must be. I've been trying to shape the dark place around me, but so much fades away. Even my memory of the process, washed away by dark waves. But some things remain. The darkest, nastiest elements, like the murder site. It's my goal, a stepping stone to travel deeper to escape. Write a narrative that takes me there. Casey will lead me to it. The train blocked my way forward, but it was here for a reason. It had a role to play. I had found another compelling location to use. Hello? Anyone there? Dead. Red fit the scene. The cult poured the gasoline over the train car. An iron cage that would soon become a coffin. Torchbearers living in the tunnels. They lock the poor folks up in a derailed subway car, doused it in gasoline. Yeah. Charming. It turns into a bit of a ghost story after that. They say the dark smoke from the fire still roams the tunnels searching for new victims to devour. There are no happy endings in this city. The story thread felt important. I could use it in one of the scenes I found. beat for the story. A sick and twisted story. But it worked. The subway car had become a burnt hut. I could get through it now. was real. It was all real. Fuck me.
My path was blocked. I had to find a way through. The lights would help me. The Echoing Hall had a story to tell. I had a new idea for a scene. changed into the murder cult's hideout.
The Fed had witnessed something here that made him run scared. Whether the summoning ritual had been a bona fide supernatural event or the mass psychosis of stark raving lunatics, it didn't change the facts. The cult was messing with things no one should mess with. The ritual was a vital part of the story, the key to reaching the murder site. The cultists were close now, a dark presence rising from the depths. The plot element I found would drive the story forward. I couldn't add a new element from here. I'd have to go to the scene.
not change the dark passes. Fuck. 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 dark presence. It was gone. The tunnel was open now. I had seen it before. I remembered now. It was always out there, hunting me. Somehow the victim's heart was the key. Cauldron Lake. Mount Cauldron Lake. Where are you? I, I'm trying to escape. I'm making progress, but I'm in danger. The Dark Presence. Help me. Please, help me. I could sense it. I was closer to home. Had the woman in the vision helped me somehow? Something had changed outside Parliament Tower, where I'd lived with Alice. It was out there, waiting for me. Who was writing who? Who was writing this poem? Me? No. Stepping to the murder site, I'd felt it hanging in the air. A meaning, the violent emotion of the act, like a cloud of wrath. The dead eyes of the victim staring at something you couldn't see, and yet making you aware of it, 
Something had soaked into this place on a molecular level, overlapping with your meaningless existence. A regression to something you had managed to forget. Marking you. Taking you for a ride. Making you crazier. had changed. I was closer now. Parliament Tower. Our home in New York. Was I really this close to being home? Going up to our apartment? Would I be home? Or was this just an echo of the real thing? Even then, the murder site had brought me one step closer to escape. Time loses meaning here. How long have I been trying to escape? Long enough for Alice to think I'm dead. monster behind it all. Either way, Alice Wake, his ex, she knew things. It was there in her art for all to see. A cry for help. The darkness she'd witnessed. And that put her in danger. Was Alice here? In the story? Alice's photo equipment, set to go off when the door opens. Get out! Leave me alone! Alice! Alice! Alice. This is a photo of Scratch. How did Alice get this? Is he stalking her? This is the door to my study, where I wrote my books. This symbol wasn't here before. Alice's video camera. No memory card inside. Part one. What was Alice working on?
When I was younger, photography was everything to me. I moved to New York thinking I'd make it as an artist. And then I met Alan. We had a good thing. We were both dedicated by our creative ambitions. The only difference was that Alan's work made money. He brought me work when he could. I took his promo shots, um, created covers for his books. I'm sure he forced his publisher into it. I was taking photos, just not my photos. And that gnawed at me. Things got complicated sometimes, but that's life, right? We loved each other. Then, Alan hit a block. I brought out a meaner side of him. One I didn't like. I set up a trip to see a doctor in Washington. I didn't tell him until we got there. We argued. Things went wrong. And he was just gone. Drowned, allegedly. It's easy for people to think it was my fault. Hell, I do, too, sometimes. About six years ago, I started hearing noises in the night. Typewriter keys clacking. Voices. Alan was back. Haunting me. Then it got violent. It was Alan. And yet, it was a monster. He always did have anger in him. I set up cameras around the apartment with motion sensors and flashes. Now, when the monster comes, I turn it into art. My nightmares caught on film. And this is the focus of my new exhibition. To show people the world is so much darker than they ever knew. I'm calling this exhibit The Dark Place. Alice. Scratch was terrorizing her. Why? story, initiation, to project myself through the dark place, to look for a way out. The story had brought me here, brought me nowhere, looped me back. I was writing this story, and in the story I now stepped into the writer's room. But there was no one here writing.
Okay, let's recap what you've told us so far, Ellen. For the past 13 years, you've been trapped in a nightmare dimension called the Dark Place. Yeah. It's like New York, but it's not New York. And can be reached from the bottom of Cauldron Lake, but it's not really under the lake. And after all this time, you've managed to get out. Yeah, yeah. But so has your evil doppelganger. Mr. Scratch? Or is it the Dark Presence? Both. It's interchangeable. He's Scratch when he looks like me, but he can change into this other form. And Scratch, the Dark Presence, wants to rewrite the world in his own image. Which would be in your image, as he looks just like you. And turn the world into a fucking nightmare. During Deerfest, which is scheduled to take place in a couple of days. You got out of the dark place by writing a novel, the pages we've been finding. But your double edited it into a horror story that's now changing reality, taking over people, yeah. making them crazy, bringing the dark place to Bright Falls. Yes, fiction coming in contact with the dark place can change reality. The story is coming true, soaking into everything, like, like, like darkness when, it, when night falls. But last time... It... This will be back in 2010. Yes, last time it didn't happen all at once. The story came true bit by bit as it unfolded. And that dark presence was still bound to the lake. I stopped it before it got the ending it wanted. Before it broke free. Based on that, there's still time. Which brings us to your magical light switch. The clicker. Magical doesn't quite cover it. Scratch wants it to bring about his ending. That that can't happen. If I can get the clicker, I, I can send him back to the dark place, make all this shit go away. I... Look, I know it's batshit crazy. My memory is it's full of holes, and I I'm not sure how much I can trust. It's like it's like it's like a half forgotten dream. Mr. Wake, Alan, we've seen our share of batshit crazy in the past 24 hours. What I want to know is, why am I, why are we written into the story? I think I saw you, or a vision of you in the dark place. I think you helped me reach out and escape somehow. With that in the story, Scratch would have edited it to get to you. To hurt you. We are all in danger. It's insane. And there's so much of it. Have you ever heard of the cult of the tree? Creepy bunch in the habit of wearing deer masks, performing murder rituals, victims turning into monsters possessed by darkness, possibly inspired by a horror story written by a certain author. Hmm? Ring any bells? The cult. Yes. Yes, they have the clicker. If the cult has the clicker, does that make them scratch his followers? How are you so certain they even have the clicker? They could be working for Scratch. I, I don't remember. It's all confused. Alan, if I'm going to act on this information, you need to be honest with me. Yeah, of course. Is he confused? Or is he hiding something? Wake said the cult has the clicker. How does he know? The writer is the reader. The next chapter, the next chapter, 
the next chapter. Keep the pages safe, the dark shining of the words. Wake is hiding pages. That's how he knows the cult has the clicker. Wake has a double. Mr. Scratch. Where is he now? A cloud of wrath wears my face. The dark place in your place. Scratching out my body of work. Scratch is here. In Washington. He's hunting Wake. Scratch looks just like Wake. Why? Don't wake up the dreamer if your life is a dream. I swam to the shore, but the water is rising. Wake and Scratch are clearly connected. Maybe Scratch got out because Wake did. Or vice versa. Wake just gave us a lot of information, but this clicker seems like a good place to start. If we find that, then we find the cult. Creepy dolls, mysterious rhymes, no weirder than anything else going on, I guess. The FBC is definitely playing with things they don't fully understand. And that always goes well. The pages we've been finding are from a horror story called Return, written by Alan Wake, and the contents of this book are coming true. Why couldn't it have been a romance? Hmm. 
Keep trying. <clears throat> no. Think. Wake has more information. I need to keep questioning him. Wake's hiding more manuscript pages. Okay, Mr. Wake. I know you have more pages of the manuscript on you. You don't understand how vital these pages are. They're the only way I can know what's coming. You're not the only one trying to solve this. This is our job. Okay. Here. Now, this is all I have. Be careful with them. Inside the trailer, at the outskirts of Watery, Saga had seen Wake's fabled clicker for the first time in the hands of the cult of the tree. A cultist stared at her. She drew a weapon. The cult of the tree has the clicker Wake told me about. They're a part of all of this. Nightingale goes missing for 13 years, shows up murdered, and then turns into a monster. After I stop Nightingale, a rider who's also been missing for 13 years turns up. What's the connection? What kind of case is this? Hmm. 
It's all on the page. The clicker, the cult. Okay, I'll head to Watery and find this trailer. Casey, you stay here and keep an eye on Mr. Wake. Got it. No, you need me there. No dice, pal. This is an FBI investigation, and I don't see a badge on that flannel. Hi, welcome. Okay, past favorite Deerfest floats. Go. The yarn puppet monstrosity. The stuffed moose and squirrels. Hello, and welcome to this Coffee World, Boaties, Washington's oh, best coffee themed amusement park. TV all of our attractions are family friendly and available to children self. of all ages. It's keeping me just away like our all coffee. Night. Yes, sir, I'm. Terribly so, sorry. take a sip of our Oh we Dear Diner organic coffee nutrition. and let the adventure begin! In the meantime, have you tried unplugging the TV for the night? Oh! Oh, there's an idea, Einstein! Whoa, 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 why, why Hold on for dear life, life on the Espresso Express! Express. Sleep on the floor! Oh! Soak in some again. local history at the Huatari Well, where two serial so. killers once hid the disemboweled bodies of their murder victims. Uh, it's not a haunted. <laughs> Come join Mocha Moose and the goats at our amusement park fitting zoom. Just don't share your coffee with the goats. <laughs> Seriously, stop feeding our goats coffee. Seriously. It's not amusing. Take in amazing views from the slow roaster Ferris wheel. I can almost see the Warrior Lighthouse trailer park. This is so much fun! And finish off at our beautiful gift shop where seniors and children under 10 receive a 9% discount on keychains and propane tanks. Welcome to Coffee World. We guarantee you'll jaw a great time. Yako, we are going to a cool guy's house to drink some brewskis. Are you coming? No, Ilmo. I'm very busy wearing a turtleneck and drinking wine like an asshole. Oh dear, I know what Yako needs. I'm a beer to the rescue. Bring out your inner Wolverine with Ama Beer. Wow, this is the best party ever. Thanks, Alma Beer. Alma Beer is a traditional Finnish lager, and we drink it the Finnish way. At the bar, while actively avoiding small talk with strangers. Getting blackout drunk on a boat during midsummer and trying not to drown. In the sauna, using your beer can to hide your pippeli from wandering eyes. Partaking in the Finnish tradition of Kalsarikemmit, drinking at home alone in your underwear with no intentions of going out. It's not sad if it's intentional. Alma Beer, your Finnish drinking adventure starts here. Enjoy your day.
Yeah, Anderson, I, I didn't want to say this in front of Wake, but... Are you sure this is a good idea? Going on your own? Assuming we believe the page, I need to check this out. We need to find the cult. Anyone we meet here could be a member. And this scratch guy... The evil doppelganger? It must be true, or else this guy can't write for shit. The quality of his writing aside, if this page turns out to be true like the rest have, this could be a breakthrough. We might solve this thing before a backup even arrives. Yeah, but they're taking their time, so just be careful out there. Meanwhile, I think me and Wake will have a chat. Maybe I can shake something loose. Okay. But remember what happened with the salt shaker. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, real funny. The page placed me in a trailer somewhere in Watery. I should ask around. Hello. Do you have a second? Ah, long time and no see, Miss Anderson. Uh, Tor and Odin are not here. They are uh, old tricksters always sneaking off. Sorry, no, I, I wanted to ask you about something else. Do you live around here? I live in Bright Falls. You've seen me around. I am Mr. Blum. You call me Vladimir. I work at the nursing home. I take care of your old people. We are on day trip, music, sauna, the good times. I bring them here in the bus. The elderly are very important. And it's a very nice bus. Thanks. Can you point me to any trailers around here? Sure. Watery Lighthouse Trailer Park. You know Koskela owns it. He owns many things in town. And where is Ilmo? I saw Ilmo and his brother at the bridge. Well, what used to be the bridge. Hey, how's it going? Oh, you rascal. Watery's definitely quaint. 
There's only so many times I can keep fixing the same hole. How's it going? I need something to force this open. Saga! Over here! Hey, Ilmo. How did your walk in the woods with Steven go? Another satisfied customer. I just hope he remembers to write a good review on the webpage. Great to see you back in Watery, Saga. Everyone in town missed you. <laughs> Super nice to see you again, Saga. They act like they've known me for years. This keeps happening. You all in the trailer park, right? Mind if I take a look inside? Um, uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the owner of the Watery Lighthouse Trailer Park, me, can help you with that. It's good to have our funniest resident back. Resident? I don't understand what you mean. If this is your way of getting out of any outstanding bills, don't worry. They've been handled. Must be hard coming back to where you and your little girl lived. It's like they remember a different reality. Is the horror story messing with their memories? So what is Coffee World? You mean you haven't seen our commercial for it? Coffee World is a smooth blend of rides, food, and fun. We even had a real moose. Until recently. Plus, right next to Coffee World is the workshop of our own Kalevala Knights Motorcycle Club. We're busy building the uh, floats for Deerfest. Don't go peeking, though. <laughs> you know, we're saving the big reveal for Deerfest. So... your commercials? They're more than commercials, Saga. Our goal is to both entertain and educate local viewers about the fine products and services we provide. And, uh... Yako here really comes alive in front of the camera. Really. Fuck off. I'm just there for the free beer. Not sure what Ilmo's excuse is. Hey, I'm writer, producer, co-lead, director. Do yourself a favor and, uh, check them all out. Are you familiar with the cult of the tree? Yeah, we always thought it was an urban legend. Kids drawing creepy symbols to scare each other, but, uh... Now it's gotten pretty damn real, huh? It's terrible what happened. We're all in shock. Well, we're looking into it. Hoping to get things back to normal soon. We're all for that. <laughs> as normal as it ever gets around here. I should profile some subjects. <sighs> Flooding did this? Elmo thinks the cult is just an urban legend. Or does he? There are things that go bump in the night. It's all true. It's all true. Sound the alarm, brother. Gather the troops, brother. Yako, the shadow of the forest is creeping closer. They don't think it's an urban legend at all. They understand it's dangerous. Ilmo made it sound like I lived here. Does he really believe that? Light, laughter, and love will guide you home. Saga and her daughter. Oh boy. Happy faces raise property value. Family comes first, Ilmo. We take care of her trailer while she's gone. She's one of us, Yako. Her spare key is safe and sound. The Koskala brothers have happy memories of me living here. 
This must be the story affecting them. I'll play along for now. I need the key to that trailer. All joking aside, yes, I would like to see my trailer. Do you have a spare set of keys? Good for you. Yeah, I have a spare set. They're just over at Coffee World. I'll get them for you, but Yaku and I have to head to Bright Falls. The spare keys are in the gift shop safe. I'll call ahead and uh, have someone get them out for you. Oh, the road's flooded. But if you just follow this trail behind me, it'll lead you there. Call the gift shop so they can give Saga a hand. Yep. There's Coffee World. Need to get across the river. What was that? turning into Taken. Is this the cult? Or the story? Or both? Another rhyme. Okay. What the hell? A charm.
<clears throat> There's another cult stash. Another one of those cult boxes. Radio Hour, brought to you by Davis Family Moose Jerky. And boy, what an eventful day here in Bright Falls. By now, we've all seen the FBI setting up shop in town, and I'm sure... More of those rhymes.
I can use this charm on my bracelet. There's another lunchbox.
Another one of those lunch boxes. Saga was sure she had hit the Taken in the head, but had not even slowed the monster down. She took aim and fired again. Another headshot. This time, the Taken staggered. Taken get them? Or were they turned into Taken? I'll need to get the key to the trailer park myself. Ilmo said the key is kept in the gift shop safe. Locked. Need something to jimmy it open with. A list of maintenance work. A screwdriver. Huh.
I already took care of all this. Coffee World. The most caffeinated place on Earth. And yet nobody's here to help me get that key. <laughs> Using screwdrivers to break into gift shops isn't exactly standard procedure. Wake says a story will change reality around us. If that's true, then I need to know what's real and what's fiction. Okay, then. Hey, this should get that gift shop open. Oh, <laughs> 
gonna get used to this. Locked. Okay. What would Ilmo use for a code? I need to open the safe. What's the combination? People hate the puzzle, Zuma. Why not just use keys? People love the puzzle, Zyako. Only very smart people can think up good puzzles. Just look around and you will find the answer. Dedicated staff will be rewarded. The combination to the safe is somewhere in the gift shop.
another cult box. The keys to my trailer. Now to find the clicker and the colt. Another Alex Casey lunchbox? The page said I'd run into a cultist here. On your toes, Saga. in the rain uh, must not drink the water or, or take a bath ever again moonshine uh, only drink the moonshine uh, brother uh, <laughs> don't look like cultists Ah, 
not helping! Hmm? I don't feel like myself. Don't know how to fight it! We're too old! Excuse me. I'm looking for the Anderson trailer. Pie, right on time. Like we were just saying, it's not true. The lies to hurt you and make you weak. Don't believe a word. They believe because deep down, they want to be told what to think. We're different. Rebels! You must stop it before it turns real. Don't be part of the story. Make the story. <laughs> Start the hell of it! <laughs> These old drunks don't seem affected by the horror story like the other locals are. Do they know what's happening here? How do you know about the story? Same as you, of course, sweetie pie. We are family. The Andersons! Vikings! Gods! So good to finally see you, Saga. I am your great uncle Odin, and this is your long lost Murfar, Thor! Sarasol. He is your grandfather, and I am the old <laughs> Just as crazy as everyone else. Just as caught in it. I need to stay focused. I need to check out the trailer. More of those kids' lunch boxes. Hello, Yako. Who is this incredibly attractive martial arts master? It's me, your brother, Ilmo. I now recognize you, but Ilmo, why are you dressed like that? Deerfest is almost here, which means we're <laughs> chopping the prices on all of our custom-designed Deerfest parade floats. Floats created by the award-winning team at Kalevala Knights Motorcycle Club. Winners of the last year's trophy for best Deerfest float featuring an animal that is not deer. That very team and you're gonna get a kick out of our latest float designs. We've done it all. Deerfest floats, restaurant floats, floats shaped like things we can't show on television. Our floats are the best way to impress your friends, propose to your partner, or throw shade at an office colleague. And we don't do just Deerfest. Our floats are a perfect gift for weddings, birthdays, bar mitzvahs, or your gonna search scenario. Our floats will punch up any special occasion. <laughs> but why take our word for it? Let's hear it from one of our many, many happy customers. I was at Deerfest last year. Floats were pretty good. One of them was a swan. And I was stoked people liked it. And there you have it. Award-winning floats now at reduced prices that will Knock you off your feet! Order yours today!
reeks of booze addressed to me from years ago. Wake was right. The horror story is changing reality, not just people's memories. Everything here reminds me of Logan. This could be her room. This is getting too real. Too personal. The Nordic Tales book Mom gave to Logan when she was little. Bon. Logan used to love her music. My newfound relatives. Cozy with the cult of the tree. And that's the clicker. In the hands of the cult, just like the page promised. Carlyvala Knights. That's the motorcycle club the Costello brothers are in. I'll take Odin and Tor up on their offer and visit their nursing home. Right after I find this biker workshop. Mulligan is a cultist? What the f- The cult of the tree! Thornton too? God damn it! And now they're all taken? about Logan wasn't real. Don't think about it. The cult has the clicker. Get it? Fix this. box. This is the workshop from the photo with the cultists. This is where they had the clicker. If it's still here, I need to find it.
I feel bad for these guys. Locked. They must be in there. There has to be a way to get this lock open. This is the cult's hideout. Their headquarters, even? There's a basement. The cult is leaving supplies around for themselves. This will be handy. A creepy basement. They're playing with me. I was so close. There was another overlap here in Watery. The parade float was the key. Mulligan and Thornton had gone there, taken the clicker, left this monster here to stop her. There's an overlap here, like there was at Cauldron Lake. Mulligan and Thornton a light nightingale. Inside, waiting, and a parade float is the key. Parade float. Is this the parade float the page mentioned? The overlap formed around Watery's dark past. The ritual to enter was tied to crafting the float. Art was the key. It had the power to let Saga in. At Cauldron Lake, giving the poem and the heart to the witch sign opened the overlap. Here, it's a parade float. But it's incomplete. This is one dis- I don't hear any haunting laughter. Stabbing. Again and again. That must mean the arm's supposed to move. How come one of them is wearing a mask and the other isn't? Not sure what Puko means, but it looks like the knife is missing. Mulligan and Thornton were fine earlier. How did this happen? A terrible mistake. Shadows crept over Mulligan and Thornton. Shadows on their faces, filling the shape of them. Bright Falls fucking finest. Shitty pastrami sandwich. 
Mulligan and Thornton became like Nightingale. Mulligan and Thornton are members of the cult. Who's the leader? Brains leaking out like milk. The thrill of domination. Not one tree. The forest. The word. A secret like this doesn't die. There is more than one leader. Hmm. <sighs> no, that is not going on the board. I already took care of all this. What's missing from the parade float? I need to put it together. So this is the Coscula Brothers parade float. Looks like only four pieces are missing. The mask is the only one without a location listed. Hmm. Gift shop. Easy. Espresso Express. Got it. I can't make out what it says. Fair trade fun zone. Is missing a soundtrack? 
The float killer isn't wearing a mask. Maybe he needs one. Should the characters be moving? I figured out what the float is missing. The materials listed for the parade float mention a mask. Where is it? Poor Mocha Moose. He never failed to amuse me. No, we know, Ilmo. There is such a thing as too much coffee. Mocha will live on in a place of honor. He lost his head. Mulligan and Thornton had one job. Mulligan and Thornton must know where the Moose Skull Mask is. mask is missing. Where is it? The dead brought back to life. The crown of the Grand Master. Moose steak is never a mistake. Just get it fucking done. They know where it is. I know they know. Where is the mask? Only in bleach it. We all bow to him. The mark of the crumbling will Show the bitch who's mine! The moose mask is at the Huatari Well, in Coffee World. saw something. Like I did in Cauldron Lake. The well, here in Coffee World. I know the Moose Skull will be there. The cult is leaving supplies around for themselves. This is one weird cult. Rose. She's that waitress from the diner. A fuse. Could come in handy.
when you ask, Maricetta will speak. It's here. I knew it would be. I made them show me. Fuse is missing. Can't operate the ride without it. There we go. Now I just need to stop it in a position that will let me get to that circuit board down there. Now I need to bring the mass to the float.
The Moose Skull goes here, obviously. A little something to get those arms moving. I guess a toy knife will do. Thank God. your knife. Some creepy laughing for atmosphere. Okay, Saga. Let's get the clicker from these assholes.
story is trying to take Logan. I can still stop this. I need the clicker. Anderson, the correct. He has it now. Wake? I saw him this way in the other overlap. It's a loop. Just like before. Through that, I need to look for another way through.
What does that mean? destroy those pieces of darkness. There. Next time they won't be coming back.
Anderson, listen. Wake? I I've been tricked. Scratch room. I tried to fix the story, but has it now. It's the key to escape. What do you mean, escape? You're already out. So is Scratch. Selfless. We're making progress. I wrote to be the story's hero. Save her family. Save us all. Save her family? Are you talking about my family? Yes, you know it's working. You just need to keep going. Did you put my family in the horror story? I keep seeing him in overlaps, but he's already out. Are these visions coming from the past? When he was still trapped in the dark place? I have the clicker. I can stop this nightmare. Wake said he could use the click. Sorry. I need to get back to Bright Falls, to Casey and Wake. I should check in with Casey. Can't open this with my bare hands. Come on, Casey. No answer. David. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Hey, this is David. Leave a message. David, can you call me back, please? It's urgent. Please. Why isn't David answering? Is Logan all right? How does this all work? Has a horror story already gotten her? Wake should know. The flooding's lowered. I should look around, see where the water was hiding.
another locked box. Special for Deerfest. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm crafting a selection of custom basswood cuckoo clocks, but the real special sauce is when it's cuckoo time and you're expecting a bird to pop out for a chirp. <laughs> out comes a big old... Another rhyme. Huh. Okay, then. I'm getting quite the charm collection.
That's it. Another one of those rhymes. There's another cult stash. There's another lunchbox. I'm gonna need a bigger charm bracelet.
There's a rhyme over here. Sure. This is ridiculous. Another charm. Another rhyme. Okay, okay.
A charm. Perfect for my bracelet. the show that Artie fellow put on today, eh?
More of those rhymes. Hmm. Lots of charms lying around here. Another one of those cult boxes. Alan Wake. Hm. My name comes up, your books come up, you come up. I've read them. There are echoes of my life in there that makes me feel like someone's been watching me. What happened to Alan Wake? The unanswered mystery. Never expected to find you alive. Ah, oh, my head's killing me. I think you like using people, Wake. Taking their lives and twisting them into your stories. And when someone gets hurt, it's kick-ass material for the next one. Shit! Spilled my coffee. <clears throat> Take it you're not a fan, then. Agent Casey. This is not your playground, and I'm not your fucking creation. It doesn't work that way. You can't make something out of nothing, even in the dark place where the rules hardly apply. It's very complicated to make fiction come true. I saw visions of what's happening. What will happen? Dreams. I try to use them in my writing. I understand how dangerous it is now. Even with a paralyzing amount of planning. I think I stopped writing. I think I gave up. But there's a manuscript. Maybe I forgot not to write. The dark place makes you forget. I just want to fix this. Find a version of the story that fixes everything. Shut up! Get down! FBI! We 
but the rider. No one else needs to get hurt. Fuck off. <laughs> What are you doing? Scratch! He's close! Stay down! Wait! I need a gun! No chance. FBI! I had escaped the dark place, so had the dark presence. Scratch. He was here, in Bright Falls. I could feel him as a growing pressure in my head, stronger by the minute. Why didn't he kill me with the rest? What did he want? I needed to find Casey. We were on the same side in this fight. Strength in numbers. Gun and a flashlight. How nostalgic. That's Casey. He was still alive. These were the cultists the FBI were after. Were they letting themselves be taken? Or did the Dark Presence not discriminate? It was unbearable. Scratch was getting closer. Stronger than ever. Casey! Look out! It's him! Oh, fuck. The 
Pressure eased off. Scratch was further away. I could think again. Casey, I'm coming! FBI investigation. The case has been transferred to us. This is bullshit. Noted. We're moving the evidence and paperwork from your field office to our base of operation at the sheriff's station. Any other pieces of evidence with you? Anything relevant? The clicker. I can't trust them with it. Nothing comes to mind. Okay. Then your work here is done. Hey. You did well. Wait! My partner, Agent Casey's MIA. We'll look for She's him. He's my partner, damn it! Agent? I be Go home. Careful, the big wake. They think he's a para utilitarian. No. Fuck this. I was so close to getting the clicker to wake. I'm not done here. Not until I find Casey. Not until my family is safe from this horror story. Tor and Odin were in the photo with a the clicker. They might know how it works. I'm off the case, but I can still visit family. Saga realized the crossbow could hold two shots at the same time. Had she just not noticed before? Or had the weapon changed somehow? Like in a dream? Torin Odin might know something about the clicker. With Wake out of reach, this is my best lead.
I need to get the clicker to wake and close this damn case before my family gets dragged any further into it. Saga! It's Tor, your grandfather. About time you were coming to visit, kiddo. How did you know I was coming to see you? Never mind that. We have bigger problems. We're losing... Oh, fuck! Fuck you, you fucking hag! Fuck! Shit. Something is off at that nursing home. It stopped me. I had seen the title page of another manuscript. Return. I would write a new draft of initiation to reach Parliament Tower using another murder site. Scratch was reaching out from the dark place to get Alice. She was out, but still in danger. something I was back and I hadn't God, forgotten I knew how this worked now I could take control no more surprises what demons he wrestled with in the dark hours of the night together with our house man the divine old gods of Asgard we have created something very special the song is called Herald of Darkness and I like to call this next segment the story of the journey of Alan Wake the musical just do what we always do. We'll chat, but instead of talking, we'll sing it! It was locked from the other side.
Champion of life. Catchy, right? It was all about me. This performance the Dark Place was putting on. But I had no control over it. I knew how utterly lost I was. The payphone was ringing again. The mystery caller was back at it. I had to find out more. Could I? Whoa! There's that famous temper. Lucky thing I'm not a paparazzi. You keep jerking me around, refusing to tell me who you are. You remember? You... Oh, fuck me. Alan, 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 listen, listen. Uh, tell me, how much do you remember? Did you visit Parliament Tower? Did you find anything there? Yeah. Alice? is in danger. Scratch is reaching out to her and there, there's another manuscript. Not initiation, return. I saw the title page. I, I don't remember writing it. Return? Oh, man, this is what we're after. The Scratch can't have it. Our, our survival, the survival of the fucking cosmic everything depends on this. Come to me. Ocean View Hotel. I left my room key for you. It's right there on the payphone. Remember, the dark place works in loops and rituals. If the waves keep pushing you away, you just need to find another way in. We go with the flow of this ocean. Catch you soon, brother. The Ocean View Hotel. A suspicious invitation to a shady meeting. Right on the money for the hard-boiled genre the whole city was built upon. The story I was building was fragile, constantly under attack. There was no time to waste. The Dark Presence was only a step behind me. The Ocean View Hotel. My destination. delivered me back to the street. What did the mystery caller said? 
If the waves keep pushing you away, you just need to find another way in. With only dream logic to lead me to the hotel, I look to the neon signs for guidance. Couldn't get through. The sky bridge above was connected to the hotel. I could be my way in, if I could reach it. This place kept pushing me under, getting into my head, poisoning me with darkness. 
I had to find a way to escape before it was too late. Too late again. Oceanview Hotel. I was getting close.
lights affected where the door led to. The room was empty except for the projector. More games. Was the film a message waiting to be played? Use that shotgun.
temple of shadow and mist. There's a window in the floor and a door in the ceiling. There's no knowing. Am I standing still or running or kneeling? You're the one who's been calling me. Indeed. I'm Tom Zane. Welcome to the House of Zane. The poet. The diver. You look like me. How the hell... Or maybe you look like me, you handsome devil. The diver was a beloved character I played in one of my films. I'm a filmmaker. A celebrated auteur. I need answers. Why is return so important? What... Al... <laughs> you always get worked up like this. Come on, I'll fix you a drink. We're in this together. Two artists collaborating, remember? Crafting the keys to our escape. Your magnum opus, Return, and its, its companion piece, my film. Sharing our, our life-altering visions, a, a melding of higher minds. Dreaming up our transcendental work of art. Here, in this room, in this room. And that is how the magic happened. <sighs> Enough of this bullshit. Alice is in danger. I need another murder site to go further. Back to Parliament Tower. Scratch is... Your wife is safe back in the real New York. But Scratch is reaching for her through an overlap. Return is the key to escaping the dark place. You need to get it before that freak does. <sighs> There's a murder site here in the hotel. Let the waves of your riding carry you there. Hello? They're all to us. If anyone asks, you will never hear. Thomas Zane had ended our talk in what felt like a paranoid fit. I had what I needed from him. There was another murder site in the hotel to guide me further toward my escape. I had to write my way to it. An idea nagged at me. I could almost reach it. play featuring a murder cult. <laughs> How meta can you get, he said, looking knowingly at the camera. I could sense the cult of the word in this, and their leader, Mr. Scratch. Rumored to be Alan Wake, the writer who'd gone missing years before. The hotel was a perfect setting for a Casey story. I was on the right path. I would start at the entrance lobby. The entrance hall set the mood where everyone had come in. The victim 
the murderer, the detective. An idea, clear as a vision, waited for me here. of the cult was cursed from the pre-show ritual on. The cult is an immersive theatrical experience. Uh-huh. You're gonna have to walk me through what that means. Immersive theater. A play where the audience can participate, spread across this hotel. The cult is a legend. The only written copy of the manuscript lost, the play is passed on as oral tradition between theater companies. Each company only performs it once. The play was said to have special power. You were like kids playing with a Ouija board. And when you call for the devil, he will come. The pre-show ritual. That's it. Set it up. Start from the beginning. The plot board was empty again. I needed... The room at the end of the corridor was closed off. It felt significant. Something terrible would happen there. again. I needed a new trap. The room had been changed from room 104 to room 225. The troop were busy building their own wicker man, where they themselves would be sacrificed.
The ballroom would be the stage of a key scene in the play. The plot board was empty again. The cult in the play was called the Cult of the Tree. With their deer masks, they were the backwoods echo of the cult of the words urban horror. I needed to find the key. It could not be opened on the side. This is where they gathered before the play. This is where it began. The plot board is... Another vision. Another idea. Hmm. Why set up a play in a hotel? Why this hotel? Because the rent is cheap? Ocean view was perfect for this. It's said to be haunted. Dark stories about murder, death, suicide. Supposedly, an actual cult once performed an unspeakable ritual to summon something in the ballroom. Did we summon the same thing? Tapped into something horrifying? It seemed like it was part of the play, but it wasn't. Does that sound crazy? You don't want to ask me about crazy, kid. A haunted hotel, yes. That's a trope for a reason. The plot board was empty again.
Springs, a special place, a shifting space, existing in a countless number of parallel realities. Sometimes a quaint small town, sometimes a hulking metropolis, different every time we set upon the road that leads us there. And yet, like a half-remembered echo of a fading dream, always familiar to us. These are the stories that take place there. More inspiring, macabre, terrifying, heartbreaking, nail-biting, absurd, and thrilling. Sometimes all of these things at once. A haunting new season of mind-bending episodes written by Alan Wake. I am your host, Orlin Dorr, and I will see you soon in Night Spring. was empty again. That's getting real, all right. I recognized my writer's room on the stage. I almost dreaded the ideas this would conjure up. What was the 
obscene in this room? Well, this is what we call the writer's room. In the play, it's where the devil rewrites reality whilst God is asleep. The devil was our star role. I got a big time celebrity to play him, and he was method acting the role to perfection. He never broke character, always wore the coat mask. His name was scratched out on the posters. Mm -hmm. And who was this mystery celebrity? Let me guess, Alan Wake? I wish I could tell you, but turns out there were masks upon masks. Whoever he really was, shit got weird when he was around. Some of the crew joked that we'd actually hired the devil to play himself. Mm, Mr. Scratch is the devil. He was born to play the role. I had to agree with Casey on that. again. I needed a new friend. This was dark, but the story had to be dark. board was empty again. I needed a new drive. The plot board was empty again. I needed a new drive. Something out of a horror story. The devil's path up the staircase was draped in blood. Yeah. 
I felt the presence of a new idea here. Mr. Scratch, if that's who the actor playing the devil was, had stayed in the hotel. Asking around at reception got me a room number. Hmm. Six, six, six. He had requested that room, specifically. The devil had a sense of humor. Or he really didn't. It was funny either way. According to the director, the actor hadn't mingled with the rest of the cast. He had only come out for the play. And always in character. had been there. I could sense his presence lingering in the room. I was about to have another killer idea. Okay, let's talk about the murder victim. The lady who was killed in the climax of the play. The leading lady. Oh, it was an honor to get to work with her. A grand dame for sure. She went back a long time. Kept insisting she had seen the long-lost original script of the play. She'd been with this mysterious writer, his muse. That was her role in the play. The muse. She was staying in room 108, where the murder happened. The set of the final scene, right. The devil comes, an unstoppable force crashing through the hotel through each scene. Executed with devastating mastery. And all leading up to him, meeting his muse. It turns out he knew her. He had only joined the play to get to her. To murder her. Not you again. The dark presence had come for me, drawn to the story I was writing as it grew darker. <laughs> the muse was the murder victim. The final scene took place in room 108. was empty again. I needed to be...
this was the murder site. There was a record at the bottom of the bathtub. Another step. Somehow I was closer to home. Closer than ever before. It's you again. The FBI agent. Saga Anderson. I'm closer now. I can feel it. You helped me get closer to escaping. Wait. Where are I still trapped? We have the clicker. We can feel it. You know about the clicker. It can help us. I destroyed the dark presence with it last time. You can help. You can find it. You must find it. I can get it to you. I have to understand. Did you write the story? Alice is in danger. I have to stop Scratch. I have to find Return. I need to get back to my apartment. I'm writing a story to get through. Initiation. It's the only way. It's a story. You can do that. You can write out. It lasted only for a moment, like two planets passing in orbit. Saga Anderson was helping me. Helping me go deeper. Closer to escape. Somehow. I had to trust her. Parliament Tower. I had to get back to my apartment. My study. I had to find the manuscript of her turn. Parliament Tower was here, again. Zane said the manuscript of Return was the key to escaping. I had to get it before Scratch did. Alice had turned the bathroom into a dark room. For months, after Ellen died, I didn't leave the apartment. I was flattened. By the confusion. The shock. The... The guilt. Fear. Alice's work had consumed the apartment. Her whole life.
One morning, I saw a deer soar past my bedroom window. It was a, a balloon of some cartoon animal. And I looked out at the street below, and I saw a little girl crying. Like losing that balloon had just ended her whole world. It was the perfect image of the horror of caring. And that's when I got myself out of bed. And I picked up my camera. There was something in the dark, something I needed to see, to show. The more shadows I photographed and filmed, the more I felt like I was on the verge of a breakthrough. I submerged myself in it. I only went out at night. My search became obsessive, but I still had no idea what I was looking for. against reality, faces in the shadows. Fear of the dark is really just fear of what could be that, that vast, paralyzing ocean. But photography can freeze reality in a snapshot, put a cage around the infinite and capture it. I need to prove those faces are really there. Manuscript of a novel. Return. A horror story about the dark presence escaping from the dark place, taking over Bright Falls. I couldn't remember writing it. I had not written it. I would never write this. I knew who had. Scratch. A monster with my face. If this story came true, Scratch would get out. People would die. Destroying the manuscript. It wouldn't stop it from happening. I would have to fix it. Edit it. I could not change the genre of the story. I'd have to work within the constraints set by Scratch. I needed someone in the story to fight the darkness. Saga Anderson. I kept seeing her in my visions. She was already in Bright Falls, already involved, but she was not in return. Not yet. I'd write her in, try to stop Scratch within the limits of the horror story. It was almost impossible. It was taking too long. I had not reached the end. before I could finish my edits to the manuscript. The memory of my edits was already fading. Terrible things would happen if the manuscript came true. Scratch was there, at Parliament Tower, undoing my work. He could use the story to escape. He could go after Alice.
Zane had said we worked on Return together. That was a lie. Scratch wrote Return. I would pay Zane another visit. He had guided me to two murder sites. I needed a new one to get back to Parliament Tower. A new draft of initiation. Another cold stash? Another rhyme.
Another one of those lunch boxes.
Saga realized the crossbow could hold two shots at the same time. Had she just not noticed before? Or had the weapon changed somehow? Like in a dream? Saga strained to pull the string of the crossbow back as far as she could. To her surprise, the latch adjusted to accommodate her. The next bolt would stop a monster. That's it. Tor and Odin claim to be my family. I know Logan and I never lived here. But I don't know enough about my family history to say they're not my relatives. Mom only ever said my grandfather was bad news. The less I knew about him, the better. I'd swing by, see the family. Not a bad time, is it? Oh, no. I was just, you know, tidying the, uh, the, um... I'm so glad you're visiting again, Saga. But Odin and Tor can't see anyone today. I was just on the phone with Tor. He invited me over. Sorry. They had a little too much fun on our trip to Watery and need to rest. I need an excuse to get in and talk to them. That's too bad. Okay if I say hi to the other residents before I go. Um... Sure. They always love visitors. Come on in. Not smart to be outside when the sun goes down. I love the architecture. I always dreamed of living in a haunted Victorian manor. <laughs> you say that like it's your first time here. Another Alex Casey lunchbox? Old gods of Asgard. So Odin and Tor had abandoned everything. Hello, Yako. Looks like another perfect morning in paradise. I agree, Ilmo. 
a perfect morning for me to drink this coffee I'm holding. Oh shit, this coffee is shit. Yako, did you just drink a regular brand coffee? Oh, I did. My perfect morning is ruined. And all because of your shit coffee. If only we could have good coffee. Hey, what? What's that sound? Oh. Ilmo, look, it's the Bright Falls blended organic coffee from Old Deer Diner. Oh, wow. I've heard that the health benefits of this coffee include increased energy, improved eyesight, better lovemaking, and deeper connection to animals. With a thermos full of hot coffee close at hand, you are always prepared for what comes next. How does it taste, Yako? I feel like a million bucks. Thanks, old dear Donner Coffee. Bright Falls Blend Organic Coffee is brewed with care right here in the Pacific Northwest from coffee beans that are sourced locally in Puerto Rico. Try it today at Coffee World and the old dear diner. And don't forget to try the delicious brunch special this month only for Deer Fest. I'd lost you. Here's some of our residents, or as I like to call them, our little Vikings. Look who swung by, everyone. Norman, clothes. Norman, we have a visitor. Where are your clothes? I'm, I'm headed back to the sauna with Artie. <sighs> Just another day in Valhalla. I should really get back to work, Saga. But feel free to spend some time with Mandy May and Norman here. It's good for them to have company. Tor and Odin are here somewhere. Need to find them. Do either of you know where I could find Tor and Odin? This is your home. Odin is sleeping upstairs. But your grandpa has been I acting crazy. Away, he got that. electrocuted when he smashed the telephone. Don't make up stories. Tor went loopy and smacked himself in the head with that hammer he's always carrying around. Tor is hurt. Something's wrong with him. Was Tor hurt badly? He never let go of that hammer when he got electrocuted. It looked like a bolt of lightning hit him. Wham! Zap! <laughs> Thank goodness Blum took the hammer away from him. It's not Tor's hammer, no matter what he keeps saying. <laughs> Blum has his moments, even if he is a Russian. Andy May, you can't say stuff like that. That's some fascinating network, Mandy May. What's your inspiration? Oh, uh, I don't know. It is what it wants to be. Uh, taking a break from making those little ornaments for Rose. Do you knit? I dabbled when I was pregnant. Socks, mittens, the usual stuff. Oh, how about knitting me some underwear? One more crude remark from you, Norman, and I'll put this needle in your ear.
This is Tor's room. More moonshine. Was this a drunken rampage? This place is a mess. And Tor's not here. I need to keep looking. Excuse me, miss, but you don't see me barging into your room while you're performing mental and physical strengthening exercises, do you? I thought not. Sorry. <laughs> don't mind me. And now I have to start over. Odin's in bad shape. He was drunk and watery. Or is this something more serious? Can you hear me, Odin? <laughs> Odin Addison? Can you hear me? I need to ask you a couple of questions. Odin? He's in no shape to talk. That woman in the painting looks like Mom. Was I born here? Or is this more of the story? Odin's in rough shape. What happened to him? These are our twilight years. There's darkness in the water. We have our little tricks. And so do you. What's happening? It's never felt this way before. You're all grown up, Saga dearest. And you're back just in time. The forces of darkness are eating away at us. We're too old and weak. You have the power in you, like all Andersons. What was that? He wasn't a projection. Odin was really here. We were connected. Are they really my family? Is that why this is happening? I found a photograph of you with the cultists. How are you involved? We're too old for this brand of crazy. But we'll drink with anyone who's offering. The cult's been on our asses to join for years. But we already have our band. And those damn fools don't know what they're dealing with. No wonder they want a pair of legends. Tor and Odin are not part of the cult. The cult thinks there's something special about Torn Odin. I'm starting to see it too. I've never connected to someone like this in my mind place before. How is this happening? I was glad to answer your call. Vikings are born travelers. You are a seer. You can see the truth. But your grandpa will want to tell you more himself. Wouldn't want to steal his thunder. Tor is in danger. You can save him. Is my mind place more than just a mental technique? Sometimes my mind place even baffles me. Is this the reason? Is there something more than intuition behind it? One thing at a time. Tor is in trouble. Once I help him, he can maybe tell me more. You said Tor is in danger. What's going on? Darkness is drawn to the spark. Tor only thinks with his hammer, never his head. The Prince of fucking Darkness is making a comeback. Tor is marked by darkness. I can feel it. Is he in his room? 
It wants to take him, and then take me. Beware of Cynthia Weaver. Bad things happen in the wellness center. Don't let her drag him under, Saga. Does Prince of Darkness refer to Scratch? Is Tor becoming taken? I need to find him before it's too late. Stop this before more people get hurt. I found Wake's clicker. What can you tell me about it? Cut off from Tom's lamp. It washed to the shore. Good work getting the light switch. The light switch is like an amp. You can play rock and roll without it, but you won't blow anyone away. Art, like Tom's writing, can change the world. But the light switch will crank that change to 11. The clicker has the power to change the story. To save Logan. This confirms what Wake said. I can't let Scratch get his hands on the clicker. By Tom's writing, Odin must mean Wake. Clicker makes Wake's writing change reality. Can I trust him with that much power? Not sure I have a choice. <sighs> Tor is not okay. Something is definitely going on here. for Axis navies and who knows what else. Ever since they sealed the bunker, it's been a hot spot for teens. The Ocean View Motel and Spa, they call it. Ironically, I believe. They go there to enjoy their beer. Need the key. Vapes and electronic cigarettes. This will put a smile Future back on your face, my dear. Sorry? <laughs> She's one of them. There must be an overlap here somewhere. But the bunker has a tendency to flood. Need to find the key. Getting in is forbidden, for your own safety. Time is long for those who wait. But in the end, stand the depths. Sheesh, <laughs> didn't see you there.
Tor is in the wellness center, isn't he? No, he's... Well, yes, but you really shouldn't go in there right now. I'm gonna need you to unlock the door. This is FBI business. But it's just... There's some things that, uh... <sighs> yes, okay, I'll let you in. Thank you, Rose. Watch out for puddles. You can hurt yourself in the dark. Odin said Thor needs help, but from what? Is he turning into a Taken? Be ready, Saga. He's hurt pretty bad, but he tore off his bandages. Why? Tor left the wellness center. Oh, come on. An electric lock. Looks like it's controlled remotely.
door needs a knob. A security computer. The Koskala brothers aren't just in the cult. They're its damn leaders. Needs a password. And a warrant, technically. But hey, desperate times. And the doors are open. You are a handsome deer.
Right. Saga fired the rifle, hit the Taken again, pulled back the bolt to reload, she fired again, another hit, faster, again, yet faster, again. A strange, lethal feedback loop forming, speeding up. Need to catch up with Tor. This must have been Tor's.
What was that? Where did Tor go? What on earth do you mean, Sokka? Tor is resting in the wellness center. Remember? What? We both saw him go into the pond. <laughs> okay. Are you fucking with me? Or, or is this a story again? Now, now. Let's cool it with the language. She's clearly lying to me. Why? Rose watched Tor go into the pond. Why is she lying to me? The secret mission for Alan's number one fan. The hero will say Wake has returned. We're all characters in his story. Gee whiz. I'm not his fucking character. But I can use that phrase to make Rose stop lying to me. Wake has returned. Cynthia took Tor. What happened to her? When the darkness touches your head, your bookshelf gets shuffled. I put her lamp in the shoebox. What do you call a lamp lady without her lamp? Is Rose talking about Cynthia or herself? Or both? Tor disappeared into the pond. It's another overlap. Has to be. How do I get inside? Rose. Um... Wake has returned. Oh. My. God. <laughs> you are the hero! You are here to save Alan! Oh, I feel so silly for trying to keep you out of the wellness center. I locked Torangel in there after they lost it, and I didn't want you getting hurt. <laughs> Before I forget, here's the page Wake told me to give you. Oh, and you'll need my keys to get around. Saga jabbed the Selector on the jukebox, the missing record in its place. Saga couldn't have found it without Odin's help. A light bloomed in through the garden window. The horror story beat me to Tor. I have to rescue him. The key to this overlap is an old Gods of Asgard record. Odin will know more. The page says the record will open the overlap, or is the page predetermining it? Am I just playing into the story? The page mentions a missing record. Do you know where it is, Odin? Driven by passion, raging like a storm. Your grandfather made the song to apologize to your mother, Freya, and to you. Tor's like a storm. Your mother did the right thing, leaving with you, even if it broke your grandfather's heart and mine. Listen to the song, Saga. It's all there. Tor only had one record made. He keeps it in the museum. Odin knows my mom's name. He's saying my mom took me away when I was still a baby. Plausible. Stay on task. The record is in the museum. What happened to Tor just now? Cynthia took him. Ugh, I knew someone was messing with Tor's head. There's something wrong with the water here. Pipes acting up, 
black stuff coming out? <sighs> Cynthia's probably behind that, too. Does Cynthia have any connection to the cult of the tree? <laughs> oh, no, she's way too frail for that. But she used to be this town's best defense against the forces of darkness. Well, after Alan. But I guess it finally got her. Wake is in custody. How have you been in contact with him? He leaves me messages in funny places, like the newspaper, books. Once he even wrote to me with a cloud. If it's something really important, he tells me in a dream. Okay. And what does he say to you with these clouds? Ways I can help him, how I can stay safe, good dinner recipes, ways to kill Taken, lots of stuff. I've been finding some pages of writing lately, too, so he must be working on a new book! Exciting! You need to get the residents out of here. It's not safe. Oh, this kind of stuff rolls right off their backs. They've lived very rich lives. Very resilient. But I already told everyone to wait at the designated muster point on the front porch. <laughs> we run drills every few months. I'm so proud of them. I'm impressed by how prepared you are. We're pretty used to this kind of thing. You're the one leaving those Alex Casey lunchboxes around, aren't you? Mm, guilty. They were the only Allen-related containers I could find online. He told me to destroy the Taken around town, and I needed some way to stash my gear. I even recruited Mandy May to make knitwork decorations to mark the sites. The stashes are for you, too. You being the hero and all. Thanks. I already have been. Wake tells you how to kill Taken? Oh, sure. <laughs> You're the hero, so you must know all about it. All you need is a strong light, and then your conventional methods of extreme violence. Simple stuff. <laughs> the tough part is hiding the bodies. I honestly don't know how to react to this. Just doing my part, sister. Rose Marigold left these lunchboxes for me. Alan Wake apparently told her to. I guess I owe her one.
Do you know anything about the cult of the tree? Yes, yes. He who reaches for a spruce tree will stumble into a juniper. Bloom was one of them. He has kicked empty. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in his shoes, but I like his shoes. How did you know Blum was part of the cult? Oh, Fox never runs out of tricks. He's a crazy man, and he will show his ways. <laughs> Bloom liked to talk. <laughs> Angus remorse. This is the one. But it's gone. Cynthia has the record. She will tell me where to find it. Cynthia targeted Tor specifically. Why him? Deal with the nasty Anderson fellow. His heart was broken. Cancelled. Leaks started appearing. It was too late. Shut her out of her own case. The Dark Presence is using Cynthia to keep me from talking to Tor. Where is Angus Remorse now? He is a young girl in love. A broken roll clicks in. The shadows to come alive. A gift. An arm of death wish. She has the record. I can get it out of her. Anga's remorse. Where is it, Cynthia? Drowned beneath dark water. Too many hands. The bathroom frightened her. Cut short. She screamed. An old folks care home. The Angus Remorse record is in Cynthia's room. In her bathtub. Angus Remorse is missing. Who took it? Our shame becomes the pale horse. Oh, Tor. Bro. Tor's love for you is in that song. That's why Cynthia wants it. To ruin him. She made Tor lust after her. We fought one scratching hag years ago. Now he's fallen for another and we might lose him for good. One less Anderson. That isn't going to happen. Cynthia has Tor in the overlap. Angus' remorse is the key to get there. I need to make Cynthia reveal its location.
a bathtub, a pond, a lake. There's a theme here. No good without power. No use crying in the dark place. What has been has caught. But trouble doesn't look like this. You can go to the basement and check the generator. But look out. You can never know in which street the devil sits. The basement. Thanks. Key fob's no good without power. Fuse is blown. Maybe there are spares nearby. <laughs> Must be locked from the other side.
Thomas Zane looked just like Wake. Is this why Odin keeps calling him Tom? Cynthia Weaver had always kept her lantern close. Someone in the bathroom with her. In the dark. Dark water pressed itself into her. She screamed. The power's off. could come in handy. There. Power's back on. Is this something they watch on movie night? That looks just like Casey. What the hell is going on?
See you there. A dam? Was Cynthia into civil engineering? The dark presence uses people's memories, their fears to corrupt them. A lantern. Was Cynthia using it for protection? Did she know about the Dark Presence? A power station? Hmm. Everyone needs a hobby, I guess. I feel like I'm missing some context here. I'm guessing the woman in this photograph was not Cynthia's favorite. Tours are romantic, huh? Anger's Remorse by Old Gods of Asgard. I need to play it in the jukebox. <laughs> Cynthia would deal with the nasty Anderson fellow, Tor, always poking people with his hammer. He had it coming. Tor is not becoming a Taken, but Cynthia is definitely corrupting him. Trying to keep him away from me? Cynthia was close to someone named Thomas Sane. Who is he? Tom was back. Tom had enemies. In a fancy hotel. Just his imagination. A nightmare started to creep in. Cynthia Weaver smiled. An old flame. Maybe Tom was taken.
Tor is here, in the overlap. Gotta find him and get the fuck out. This place. No power. Can't use the switch. I need to get the power on to use the switch. The wall just disappeared. The light did that? It's a loop, like the others. I need to reach the center. Cynthia, she's here. A dead end. Here again.
Locked. The key has to be nearby. Back again. Gotta go deeper. I'm here to take him back. I need to get the lights on to reach him. Saga! It's so damn dark down here. I'm underwater! He's past me at the bottom. 
I don't think I'm gonna make it. I can't see a way out. Let's see what's going on. You can apologize to him yourself. I'm getting you the hell out of here. Cynthia took the record and I brought it back. Change the story. If this is the past, if this is you still in the dark place, then you can do that, right? 
You cannot write her in. She's my daughter, goddammit! Logan is in the story. I couldn't get him to change it. I have the clicker. I'll make him change it now. He had no right to do this to Logan. To my family. Tor! Oh, oh, fucking hell. Are you okay? Uh, hey, it took your sweet time to come save your grandpa, huh? Uh. Nice attitude. A family trait? Uh, uh, you're right. Sorry. Thanks for helping out an old bastard like me. That's my job. Now, I've got some questions for you. <laughs> of course you do, sweetie pie. <laughs> and I got answers. <laughs> We need to talk. <sighs> Damn right. Lots for me to explain. But not here. The knight's got ears. We can have our talk in your head. You have a room there, right? How do you know about that? I'm your grandfather. <laughs> what don't I know? You know about my mind place? How is that possible? We all have the power. Find the truth. Damn right I do. Odin already told you you're a seer. You can gaze into their heads, see the truth. See past the lies. Past this bullshit horror story. Us Andersons are bound by it. You can fight it. Don't be the story. Make the story. It's true. I am a seer. I have a power. My mind place is more than I thought it was. This isn't my intuition. I'm seeing their thoughts. Is this why I know the truth about Logan? While everyone else forgot? I have the clicker. Can I use it to save my daughter? An app? Get your guitar roaring, and your drums crashing. Blow reality's eardrums. Just the light switch isn't enough. It's Tom's story we're dealing with, so he's gotta be the one to rewrite it. After that's done, he can flick that switch to bring the whole thing home, baby. I can't use the clicker without Wake. Tom. Meaning Wake. He needs to rewrite the story first. I can't stop the horror story without him. You said you were my grandfather. If that's true, why wasn't I told about you? You were part of our fucked up family, way before this horror story. I was a shitty fucking dad to Freya. Your mom didn't deserve that. Not one bit. Things were said and done. Not a day goes by I haven't regretted it. But that fucking father of yours didn't make things any easier. I know Freya is gone. So I need to apologize to you. I am sorry, Saga. I can see he's sorry. Mom said she didn't want anything to do with my grandfather. And that my father died before I could remember. It all matches. Tor and Odin are part of my family. Mom wouldn't talk about my father. You knew him? 
Some doors are better left closed. Your dad was a complicated bastard. Always thinking too many steps ahead. That's not how we work. There was trouble, and then he was gone. I didn't handle it well. Freya didn't want anything to do with me after that. I can't blame her. I never knew my dad or my mom's family. So many broken relationships in my past. I won't lose mine. With Logan. With David. I won't stop until they're safe. You said you were a shitty father to my mom. Is that why she left? Freya never looked back. My girl was strong. Freya always thought our powers had a dangerous side. Odin and me did fuck with things that should not have been fucked with. Your mom had common sense. She raised you right. Kept you safe. I'm not surprised she didn't tell you about the Anderson power. She was always protecting me. Whenever I told my mom about my mind place, she called it make-believe. I wish she'd been more honest with me. At least towards the end. Wake needs to be the one to rewrite the ending. And I'll need to keep an eye on him. Overlaps require pieces of art to enter. Is that because of the dark places focus on art? The way Tor behaved? I'm surprised my mom hung around for as long as she did. But he is genuinely sorry. Wake wrote Logan into the story. He had no right to use her like this. There is still time to make him fix it. I won't give him a choice. Thanks for telling me this, Tor. I need to go find Wake. To stop this. The old gods of Asgard will be ready to help. Me and my bro will bring the rock when you need it. Remember, your daughter is alive just kept from you by this bullshit horror story. I needed to hear that. Thanks, Grandpa. So the Anderson's finest will fix us both up. See you soon. The FBC is holding Wake at the Sheriff's Station. I need to make Agent Estevez understand. They have Wake and I have the Clicker. We have to work together to stop this. Casey. Do you read me, Casey? <sighs> Damn it. Where are you, Casey? He better be okay. Focus, Saga. Get to the station. To Wake. the pet. 
Main Radio Hour. Up next, it's time to make some predictions on what parade floats we'll be seeing at Deerfest. This year's parade theme is deer, just like every year, so we're not exactly reinventing the wheel here. But first, I need to address something. Nonsense about certain people passing away. Listen, I know everybody who steps foot in and out of this town. So I should. More of those kids' lunch boxes.
Another locked box. There's another cult stash. Another one of those rhymes. Hmm. Such a shame.
another lunchbox. There's a rhyme over here. Never have too many charms. There's another lunchbox. Another one of those lunch boxes. Another rhyme.
Yes. Another cult stash?
another cult box. He wouldn't just wander off and not tell us. Especially after all the weirdness at the lodge. I'm worried. Well, I'm fucking worried too. You remember how it went last time? The sacrifices we made? Pain. Another locked box. Those people just burst in here and expect others to clean up after them.
hear some concerning things over from Bright Falls. You mean that horrible affair at the lodge? Why is everyone running around shooting at everything nowadays? I thought small towns like ours were supposed to be safe. There's another cult stash. Propose to me!
More of those rhymes. Sure. Charmed, I'm sure. This bridge got fixed quick. Thinking we need a neighborhood watch. Keep incidents like the one in Bright Falls from happening around here. But we already have that. Right next door. Yes, well, I think the Calabala Knights might be too busy with you know, their own stuff. Bikes. This is not the right way. I have a case to get back to.
Another Alex Casey lunchbox? Another rhyme. Right. Another charm. Witchfinder's Station. I've been there before. Worth checking out. That's a good deer.
another one of those cult boxes.
What the? this? How do you know I'm here? I've been wondering your incessant tampering with my project. You have made some advantageous progress, however. What project? What project? So you've just been playing around with my test arrangements with absolutely no understanding of their function. Oh, it's hubris. Indeed. Get to the point. Ah, and really, I see. The point is that by your unwanted actions, you may have opened the way. And now I'll get to observe what exactly occurs when a subject is caught in the act of dressing. Oh, you have no idea how much I hate this thing. Oh, you have no idea how much I hate this thing. Oh, you have no idea how much I hate this thing. Hey, are you there? <laughs> Sounds like this person got more than they bargained for. Ugh, this stuff again. There's something else in there, too. This will be handy. Aiming through the scope, Saga could see the flickering darkness that protected the Taken, saw it waver and jerk, saw a shifting opening in it. There, she fired, sending the bullet through to find its way home. Get the clicker to wake and make him fix his attempt to play God. That's the plan. But the FBC have him. Rose did all this for me. She completely believes that I am the hero in Wake's story. She should be a bit more critical of a person who tries to control people's lives. Hmm. 
Think Saga. Makes sense. What if I take the weird doll to the place it's not supposed to go? What's the worst that can happen? Okay. There's a lesson here. Probably something about hubris. actually kind of cute the longer you look at them. Makes sense.
They think they're so mysterious, they're ridiculous masks, children in costumes. I've seen some crazy things in my life, but I don't know. Power's out. Always a good sign. Anyone here? I'm here, in the closet. Agent Estevez? Is that you? Anderson? Did I tell you to fuck off? Looks like it's a good thing I didn't. <sighs> Looks like. <laughs> My leg's busted, so I'm gonna need your help. Listen, there is a person out there with you invaded by something that we call the Shadow, and if you a don't- taken. Yeah, I'll handle it. Estevez. That leg doesn't look good. <sighs> Feels even worse. But thanks for saving the rest of me. We should talk. What happened here? <laughs> Where to fucking start? Uh... We came to check out a system alert at Cauldron Lake, but it's worse than we could handle. Real boondoggle. The police, my own agents, most were invaded before we could even react. What did the FBC come here to do? Bright Falls is the site of a recurring altered world event. The shadow is stronger than we expected. We're low on resources, problems at HQ. But we do have equipment for dealing with the shaded threat. We were just caught off guard before we could set it up. Have you found my partner, Agent Casey? Yeah, we found him. Out in the woods. He had a close encounter with the Shadow, and it did something to him. Is he okay? He's alive. We took him down to the morgue for an examination. Haven't heard anything since the attack. Where is Wake? I know what's going on here. Wake can fix this. Alan Wake is a para-utilitarian. The word's a mouthful, so you know it's serious. We have him locked up in the holding cells per protocol. He's connected to the Shadow in some way. Estevez, I need to see Wake. How do I get into the cell block? Okay. <laughs> Protocols don't mean that much at this point anyway. Don't make me regret this, Anderson. Until the power's back on, the door to the holding cells won't open. There's a fuse box downstairs in the basement. Here. You'll need these keys. Back into the morgue, huh? Fantastic.
I'm sure Sheriff Draco wouldn't mind me borrowing this. The Taken rushed toward her, but Saga remained where she was, unmoving. She willed the pellets to stay on course, to hit the target. The Taken was closer. She waited. Closer. Still she waited. Until the very last moment. Do you read me, Anderson? I read you. Have you had our frequency this entire time? Eavesdropping is a big part of the job. But no, I got it from your partner. Anderson, look for a fuse to replace the blown out one in the fuse box. That should get the power going again. Yeah. On it. Another cult stash? This is not the way. what I've done with the place. Hmm. Could use a bit more light. Funny. Stay put, Casey. I'll let you know when it's safe. 
How are you holding on? on? Ah, don't give me that worried look, Anderson. It's just... It's a flesh wound. <laughs> Gave me a chance to have a... a nice chat about ex-wives with uh, Kieran. Uh, Agent Estevez, I mean. Making new friends, uh, huh? I'm jealous. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. What's the situation on your end? What happened at the hotel? Wake was telling the truth about the cult being after him. The thing, the dark presence, it's real too. I saw it. A fucked up monster cloud. Wake tried to warn me. It knocked me out. FBC found me in the woods later. Watery turned out to be a good lead. Found the clicker and the cult. But the horror story is changing reality. Like Wake said it would. Logan, she's, uh... The story claims she died here. But we can stop it. Wait, Saga. What are you, um... Logan is gone. She has been. For a long time. Casey's affected by the horror story, too. I'm fighting for them all now. I'm gonna fix this, Casey. You, Logan, all of it. I just need to get the power back on first. Yeah, give him hell, Anderson. Just remember, some things in life can't be fixed with a light switch. As for the power problem, here. I found a fuse on those poor bastards there. I'll take care of it.
Anderson. Good news, bad news. You can get to the cell block now, but the shaded hostels that were in there are on the loose. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> Situation is under control, Estevez. Coming back up. Copy. Anderson, over here. Behind the counter. Got a little cramped in that closet. Wish me luck. According to the luck and probability department, is the FBC be sending back. any help? We were the help. Well, us in the lake house. But we still have bureau gear specifically engineered to fight this threat. It's stored in the back lot. We were setting it up when the Taken interrupted us. We have light arrays, a containment cell, etc., etc. We are not out of this fight yet. What's going on? We had a hell of a time avoiding those Taken. Ended up back here. Anyway, I wanted to warn you that we have the Coscula brothers in the cells as well. They're the ringleaders of the cult of the tree. Don't let your guard down. What's at the lake house? It's a bureau research facility at Cauldron Lake set up to study the effects of this AWE. When I got into town, I went there for backup. The whole station is lost, taken by the shadow. Lost a lot of agents. Barely got out myself. Saga, fucking FBI, FBC, you government fucks all fucking this up for us. Let us the fuck out. You're the leaders of the cult. You're not going anywhere. Wake will ruin everything. Get rid of him, Saga. You fucking shot me. Typical government stooge. Send me out so I can kill him, that fucker. You come to our town and act like you know what you're dealing with, but you have no fucking idea! Let us out! You can't stop it, none of you can. We can take care of this. We've been preparing for this. Do you have it? You wrote Logan into the story. You told me yourself, from the dark place. Listen, Scratch is coming. He's, he's close. He's almost here. He's... My daughter is dead because of you. She's a child. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm trying to fix this. I will fix this. I'll save everyone, but we're running out of time. I need the clicker. I have the clicker. You will fix this. You will save my daughter. Promise me. Yes, I promise. But we're out of time. Hurry! Don't fucking give it to him! He's a fucking monster, Saga! There it is. We've been waiting for you, motherfucker. I'm gonna fucking destroy you! Pretending to be awake. The plan is that. Estevez, come in. Scratch is here. How do I stop him? The containment unit isn't prepped, but the lighter rate is effective. Okay, light. Got it.
scratches here. How do I stop him? Bad news. The containment unit isn't prepped, but the light array should affect him. <laughs> These must power the light array. Need to find more. Another core activated. Only one left. Doing great. And now, the sheriff station? Did you hear? Hear what? Apparently, Hello. they locked up that crime writer. Hello, Mayor Setter. Nice ago. to meet you. And then, they find him, and oh, boom, what? all hell breaks loose. Big city folks, the FBI, famous writers. Oh, they're all bad luck, if you ask me. Well, that's the cutest mare I've ever seen, for sure.
This has got to be an Ilmo idea. I need... Scratches wakes double. He tricked us. He almost got the clicker from me. The whole plan has gone out the window. How could we get this so wrong? Textbook boondoggle. You said it, Anderson. It's a shit show. So what's the plan? Scratch pretended to be wake to trick us. He almost won me over. I should have trusted my gut. I had a bad feeling about him when we found him at the lake. When that insane monster cloud came at me in the woods, I saw a face inside it. Wakes. 
I think he was always a monster. Always Scratch. The FBC usually handles stuff like this, right? Any thoughts? Hold up. You brought a paranatural object in here without telling me and then almost handed it over to a hostile entity? I didn't know if I could trust you. That was a mistake. So was believing Scratch. But it's not too late. <sighs> I just need to understand more. <laughs> you got that right. Let's start acting like we're on the same side, yeah? The horror story is changing reality. It made it so my daughter died here, even though she's supposed to be back home in Virginia. Do you know if that's... Uh... AWEs are localized distortions of reality. The area outside town might not be affected. Sometimes they expand, sometimes they fizzle out. If we can make sure it's the latter, your kid might be fine. So tell me what I'm missing. The FBC must know something. Good news, we have Bureau Intel on all of this. Bad news, it's highly classified. Good news, consider yourself deputized into the Federal Bureau of Control. Here's a key to the cell where we keep the files. Happy reading. Okay. Um, thanks. Go team. The whole thing is a nightmare. I can't let my family be torn apart. Having family isn't easy in this line of work. The late nights, travel, alternate realities threatening their existence. My ex-wife couldn't take it. Karen, you're better off without her. I know I am. I can tell something is wrong. What's happening to Casey? I'm a goner. Swell. A shadow crawling under my skin. In my head. Call my ex. Tell her I'm sorry. Terminal case, Casey. Something is wrong with him. He's hurt worse than he says. He's scared. Assumed Wake escaped the dark place. Is it possible he's still there? The big apple in an ocean of darkness. Gone diving. Note from my editor. You're using the wrong tense. Trapped in a loop. My friends will meet him when I'm gone. Wake is still trapped in the dark place. Maybe he always was. Scratch was pretending to be awake, manipulating me. What does he want from me? No, I'm in control here. It's my mind place. He's powerful, too powerful. Just his presence here makes me feel sick, like a wave of terror through my head. I feel his single-minded drive to get the clicker. That's all the stashes. These people were well prepared. The dark presence is vulnerable against bright light. At least that makes sense.
I already took care of all this. Wake is trapped in the dark place. He's been reaching out, communicating with me in the overlaps. Wake isn't the first person the Dark Presence disguised itself as. The lake is a gateway to the Dark Place. What the hell is a para-utilitarian? The clicker amplifies any changes to reality suggested by a piece of art. Makes them permanent. Okay, okay. I need to know what information I can still trust. Wake told me the clicker would fix this. But Wake was actually Scratch. How can I trust anything he said? The artist must conclude his work. He rides a storm on your piece. Wake up and smell the danger. We told you already, kiddo. What Tom said about the light switch is true. Don't let the story confuse you. You need him to write the ending you want. The clicker can make that ending come true. But we don't have Wake. Everything we knew about the Clicker was true. He wasn't lying. Scratch told me the clicker can be used to change the story. Does that match your understanding of this thing? Yeah, the light switch is a paranatural item, maybe even an object of power. We have verified reports that Alan Wake was in possession of it during the AWE here back in 2010. It definitely has power. We know that much. I can come up with a plan. I always do.
The clicker can fix this, but I can't use it without Wake. Tor knows about this stuff. Maybe he can help. Wake is still in the dark place. How do I get him out? We live and breathe rock and roll. From the silence of screams, from the fever of dreams. The clicker can amp up other works of art, not just Tom's writing. Anything created with passion. The dark power of the lake will make it creep into reality. But if the holder of the clicker believes in the art, they can make it all come true in the flick of a switch. I can use the clicker without Wake. Only Wake's writing can change the horror story. But I can use the clicker to change something else. Like getting Wake out of the dark place. I will use the clicker to change reality and bring Wake back at Cauldron Lake. I'll need the right work of art, but that won't be a problem. I've got it now. I just need to tell the others what to do and fix everything for good. So we need Wake to fix the story, right? That hasn't changed. So here's what I have. Wake's still trapped in the dark place, under the lake. I think we can use the clicker to get him out. But first, we need a work of art. Something other than his story. And that'll get him here. I'm not filling out the paperwork for this one. I wouldn't know where to start. But I'm sold. Okay. Look, this feels like something that once we get the ball rolling, there's no turning back. You sure you have it all figured out? I'm ready to head to Cauldron Lake now. Let's get the plan started. Okay, here we go. We'll be there for you. What do you need from us? I'll head to Cauldron Lake with the clicker. Scratch will try to get you, Anderson. You'll need backup. I can tell there's no talking you out of coming, Casey. Estevez, is there a way to get that light array to the lake? Oh, I've got you covered, so good news there. And we'll bring our mobile containment unit. It's specially built for entities like Scratch. And this work of art, Anderson. What's the plan for that? I'll make some calls on the way. Just meet me at Cauldron Lake. Hey, Alex. It'll be easier on you to ride with us. We'll have water fun parking. I like the sound of that. Tor, I need the old gods of Asgard. I need a very special song. Hell yeah! The tour bus is already loaded, and we said our goodbyes! Ready to hit the road! Just like the old times, baby! You saw this coming, huh? Of course. I need a song about Alan Wake. About bringing him out of the dark place. A writer. A lake of darkness. Bringing him into the light. <laughs> it writes itself. I hope they've still got it. Please pick up. 
David. David! It's me. Where have you- Stop. For once, you need to listen. You left me. You took my daughter away from me. Then you let her... She's dead because of you. And I don't ever want to hear your voice again. Stop calling me. David! Jesus Christ. It's getting worse. It's spreading. I'm running out of time. Coming with the lights, Anderson. Where do you want them? Set them up on the shore. We need to be ready if Scratch shows up. We'll be ready. Set the beds out. Must be torn out in. Maybe I should check in. Kiddo! We're almost at the gig! And Oz has run over four minions of darkness! <laughs> the boss is our hammer! I'm driving with one hand! I need you to meet me at the shore. Is the song ready? Almost! Odin's got a killer chorus! Bro, tree, tree! What tree? There's no tree in the song! Who the fuck put the tree in the middle of the road? We're not on a road! Drive carefully, Grandpa. Pedal to the metal, bro! Metal to the metal!
lights in the containment cell are good to go, Anderson. Great. The Torin Ode in there yet? <laughs> the two golden oldies? Oh, they're here. And they bought moonshine. I love them already. <laughs> they're a lot. You wanted to know what art we would use? Well, that's them. I'll be there soon. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. We were in a hurry. The power supply is spotty. Your partner here will try to keep it running. But I, I'm not a damn mechanic. I wish your tech guy was here, Karen. Grandpa, you signal me when the song is done, and I'll use the clicker to bring Wake back. Hit it! Hello, Come on, Wake! Wake to see the mental agent here tonight. The to experience a soul saving mind! A whole lot of paranormal crimes happening right now. It's fucking awesome. I want a t-shirt. The show's drawing a crowd. Taking incoming, Anderson. <laughs>
Look out on the right. Stock up on ammo. I have them in the light. it real? So where the fuck is he? I don't have time for this, so let's get over with. Tell me, was this all fake? A show? No one said otherwise, Mr. Wei. It was to indulge you, but we can stop pretending now. Uh, masks come off. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. I don't even think you know who's under your mask. 
But you know how to make things difficult for yourself. All these rules. Endless, convoluted loops you insist on going through. You are so lucky. You know. There are so many people helping you. Armies of people. Myself. Your wife. Alice. I need to get to her. She's in danger. She is. Because of you. And so is someone important to me. Someone you pulled into this. You keep opening doors. Peeking in. Reaching through to get what you want, and that puts you in my path. I don't know what you're talking about. I have to go now. Maybe you will make it through this time. This has gone on long enough. This and our night springs, it was a nice distraction. It's time someone gave me a straight answer here. The next time we meet, the circumstances will be very different. And you would do well to return the favor by playing your part. Or stay out of my way, Mr. Wig. Whatever you say. Door, Zane, the masks were finally coming off. Was it a sign I was closer to escaping? I had no time to waste. in the snow. When the panic is biggest, the help is also near. Door didn't seem happy to see me this time. Fearing the master is the root of wisdom. But don't let the game get you down. He's playing his role. Maybe put him in your films, Tom. Like you have put me. Say <laughs> Anolisk. What films? <laughs> I'm a fan of your masterworks. Uh, there is Tom the Poet, my favorite, and Uerden Ur is the most famous one, of course. And is it true what I hear? That it's coming back to cinema soon? Is there a bottom to this rumor? I need to get back to my apartment. Can you help me? Well, plan is half done. You asked me to make sure you won't forget the... 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 light pictures. The photos you artist wife took. Uh, they are waiting in the shoe box in the basement. What you leave behind, you find in front of you. Okay. Thanks, Adi.
These were Alice's photos. I recognized the style. One showed the clicker sinking into darkness. The other showed a light in the shape of a bullet. They were important, even if I didn't know what to do with them yet. To get to Parliament Tower, I needed to find a murder site. Zane would know where to find one. Inside this messy maze of blood trails I was chasing the cult through, I ran into the filmmaker, Thomas Zane. An esoteric bohemian with a hard-on for acts of cruelty performed in the name of occult nonsense. A director wants to control every aspect of the world in their films. Is a cult leader any different? Was Zane just another alias for Scratch? Wake and Zane had been working on something together. I was going to get the truth out of Zane with whatever means necessary. Somewhere else. 
Was I there to watch the shadows, or was I a shadow? Zane's room, 665, was upstairs. The elevator would take me there. No one wake. I needed a new draft of the story. One that would get me a head a scratch. Something told me Zane wouldn't be happy to see me this time. I'm in control now. The second you try anything, I will shoot you in the head! Scratch wrote return, not me! You're a fucking liar! You'd given up. You stopped writing. You said it was too dangerous, that, that we didn't deserve to get out. And then he showed up. Scratch. He promised to write. To get me the hell out of here. He was magnificent. A visionary. Turn and left me behind. It's still here, and so is he. I know I fucked up. But you can still catch him before he gets out, before he gets to your wife. And when you get to him, don't hesitate. Kill the bastard for what he did to us. There's a murder site in my cinema. Where my film Nightless Night is playing.
I told you not to try anything! I had to find the movie theater Poets Cinema. The next murder site was there. Zane had created the film in tandem with Return to escape the dark place. based on my interpretation to change. The cinema lobby was a gateway to other realities on the silver screen. I could set a scene here. writing at some point I can't stop there's too much at stake Missing something.
like I've been on this case looking for the cult of the word for a lifetime or more. The only case I'd ever been on. They would surface from the dark with their depraved acts of violence and fade back into the night, leaving behind bloody crime scenes and clues heavy with obscure meanings that led nowhere. Arriving at the cinema, I felt them. Monumental, terrifying revelation trembling before me, ready to open its jaws and swallow me whole. This place had significance to the cult. There was something to use there. The main event was the murder. I had to find my way to it. First step toward the murder site. I was making progress. Someone had barricaded themselves in the room. ceremony, or so we made our new members believe. Two of New York's finest, they had performed endless favors to earn their place among us. We had something special waiting for them, and something very special for you, Alex Casey. Who's your leader? Alan Wake? Hmm? Scratch? Zane? Give me a name! <laughs> You will meet him soon enough. There was no end to the corruption. It fit the genre, so I'd use it.
urban legends circling Thomas Zane were a bottomless rabbit hole. I'd done some digging. To film freaks, he was a mythic auteur in the art house cinema. A rising star coming to America from Finland. But he only created one film. Tom the Poet. Before he went missing. Mirroring the vanishing of the main character in the movie. Played by himself. The biggest mystery was around his lost film. An early work made in Finland. Nightless Night. Rumored to have mystic properties. Some claimed it was a snuff film, that the ritual murder in the film was an actual murder. There were no known surviving copies, but the cult chased it as if it were their unholy grail, just like Wake's books were. Wake, I'm lost. Cops had gotten their 15 minutes of fame with the cult, and it had been a scream. They were the murder victims. I had to find a way into the projection booth somehow. Sad bunch of clowns in funny masks and hoods pretending to be a secret society. Maybe it is you who's playing a role, Mr. Casey. A role carefully laid out for you. A puppet blindly performing the ritual steps for the glory of the cult. Huh? What the fuck have you been smoking? Nightless night. A clip of the lost film survived. You will see, Mr. Casey. In the Nightless Night, you will finally see. Nightless Night was Zane's film. It played a role in this story.
The light of the lamp shone out of the screen and revealed the door. back out into the night. The seedy alley away from prying eyes was a good scene for dark deeds. I should look at someone who had fallen to their death the on the rooftop. making progress. The city trapped in eternal night, they watch the film where the night never arrives, where the night hides in your mind.
me, Mr. Casey. I'm all yours. Go ahead. Ask that burning question in your mind. How did you do it? How did you get me into that film clip without my remembering it? Talk to me, damn it! You've seen the film? Good, good. Now you're ready to meet the Grand Master. He's waiting for you in the projection booth where everything will be revealed. Where he will project a new reality onto this one. And now, Mr. Casey, I've played my part to the end. No, no, no! Crazy bastard! Why'd he jump? The projection booth. Was that where I find the murder site?
straight to the top. The dirty cops looked down at the city. Their city. They had committed repulsive. This initiation, do you? Nah. I'm sure we'll just chant some ceremonial stuff. <laughs> it's about time. We paid our dues. Made plenty of their problems disappear. Jumped on those lies down there and shoot. What we did or didn't do, it's all behind us now. We're going straight to the top, partner. Yep, like we died and went to heaven. to be at the scene, to see and understand it, in order to change it.
would create something terrible in the scene, but it's what the story needed. I found myself in a maze of film equipment. There had to be a way to the projection booth from here. I wasn't alone. I was back where I started. A loop within a loop. I had to keep going. The Casey in the story was losing it. I wasn't far behind. Back at the beginning again. I had to keep going, find a way to the murder site. <clears throat> Hello? Hey! It's gone. But I saw someone. Back at the beginning again. I had to keep going. Find a way to the murder site. Casey? Who's there? 
Look, you got the wrong guy. I'm not Alex Casey. I only play him in the movies. He's just a fictional character. What, what? What's going on here? You don't have to kill me. You don't have to go get that knife and stab me. You can... Oh, no. Oh, no, you don't. You'll be... What the fuck? Welcome, Alex Casey. You've done well. You've played your role perfectly. Everything out of your mouth is a damn lie. The only place any of this makes any sense is in your psychotic brain. As a fictional character in the story, you fulfilled your purpose. You brought the writer of the story here. You can go now, Casey. No, 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 I'm not going anywhere before I get some answers! How was I in that movie? How, why does all this feel so familiar? What, who the fuck are you? Who the fuck am I? No! And welcome to you, Alan Wake. What the hell? This is the ritual to lead you on. We are just one step away from your final destination. Mr. Wake. But first, here is an unanswered mystery for you. If Casey was fictional, and you assumed his role as the detective, are you now fictional too? Whose story are you living, Mr. Wake? The visions are getting under my skin, coming too close for comfort. Not a separate layer, but mingling with my own reality in the dark place. Wait. Dead end. This can't be right. Did I miss something? The murder site. The mask was the key. This is how I could help her. Saga Anderson, listen. I I've been tricked. Scratch wrote returned. I, I tried to fix the story, but he stopped me before I reached the end. He has it now. It's the key to escape. What do you mean, escape? Wait, oh, Scratch. I need to stop him. I need to stop him before he gets out. He's after Alice. I'm still trapped, but I'm making progress. I wrote you in to be the story's hero. Scratch made a horror story. I need to match the genre. It has to be dark, but the hero can break through, save her family, save us all. Save her family? Are you talking about my family? Yes. Whatever you're doing, it's working. You just need to keep going. Did we have that in the horror story? I was closer now. Closer than ever before, but there was no time to lose. Everything was hanging in the balance. I could still lose it all. Parliament Tower. I had to make it work this time. I could stop Scratch, get the manuscript, fix its ending. I was traveling deeper into the dark place. 
The poem on the wall was growing at the same pace, dogging my footsteps, like my unwanted shadow moving in the corner of my eye. It wasn't my writing. I didn't know what it was. A terrible prophecy, a curse looming over me. nightmare but I damn well try this case would never be closed I had more questions now than at the start the irony of being trapped in a postmodern detective story I felt watched the eyes of some unseen audience on me I wanted to turn to the hidden camera and tell them to fuck off but I didn't know where to look to break the fourth wall. There would always be another case for Casey. A million stories in this dark city. The night opened up to welcome me. I walked into her arms. Roll credits. tower. It was back. The phone was ringing again. Somehow I sensed it wasn't Zane this time. scratch either huh you're me me I don't understand there's a lot I don't understand a dark place operates in loops time is a story I'm calling you from a different point in that story from the future I'm never getting out of here am I yes you will and no you won't and that is by your own choice what does that mean I'm sorry for what you'll have to go through. Alice's photos you found from the shoebox in the talk show basement. Before you can go to Parliament Tower, you must put them in the shoebox at her statue at the plaza to help you, to help Alice, to help Saga Anderson. I'm my own deus ex machina? Really? <laughs> How many writers does it take to finish a story? One for each draft. It's the same writer, but in a different point in time. I'd follow the steps he laid out for me.
I'd been here many times before. I didn't know how many. This felt different, like my last chance. If it wasn't already too late. Too late? Scratch was in there, writing his horror story. There was still time to stop him. I needed to get inside. There's so much rage inside of him, I can't stand it anymore. God, I tried so hard. I can't. I can't. made a decision. Most of you won't understand. People call me an artist. But I don't care about any of that. I just wanted to show the world what I see. I can't keep going like I have been. It's time for a perspective shift. To go from photographer to subject. From artist to art. Dead. Scratch tortured her until she couldn't stand it anymore. Until she broke. And all that time, she thought it was me. Scratch was still here. He hadn't escaped the dark place yet. He was scratching my edits out of return. <laughs> I 
I had seen this before. This was not Scratch. This was me. Caught in a loop. I had stopped myself trying to fix the manuscript. I was the one haunting Alice. It was always me. I killed her. will meet him when you're gone. Nightingale in the overlap. Hey! Are you okay? Oh, no! It's my fault! He got out with my face! Scratch! That night I found Wake here. He appeared because of this. The summoning. That was Wake. Scratch wasn't pretending to be Wake. They're the same Son person. Bitch. He's here! Scratch! Watch out, Anderson! Estevez, Scratch is Wake, with the dark presence inside him. He wants the clicker. Change of plan. I'll lure him to the cell. When we're inside, lock it. And blast it with all you got. Pin him down with a gunfire for me to get the light on him. On it! Damn it! Anderson, we lost power. It's back on. Now it's the bed! <laughs> Got him. Crap. It's your shot, Anderson. Put the lights on. We lost power. He's free. Hang in there, Anderson. <laughs> You have no place in the You got my blood in you, Get the light on him. I got a pit. Hurry, Anderson. Anderson, I dropped gear for you. Okay, he's free. Lost the lights. Anderson, he's coming.
sorry. Wake? Is it you? Oh, so sorry. Did it work? Official, Tear Fist is cancelled. Today, Bright Falls feels a little less bright. to get to our next gig. We're doing this for you and our lovely saga. You take care of things on this side. Don't screw it up, Tom! Welcome back, Wake. You are Wake now, right? With the shadow out of you? Some good news, at least. Bad news is, I haven't seen a situation this fucked since the AWE in Eagle River. The shadow's now in Alex, and Anderson is gone. We need to figure out how to salvage this. I'll do anything it takes to fix this, Agent Estevez. I'm the reason this is all happening. It's never that simple. But I should have put you in a box and shipped you off to a containment facility the second I laid eyes on you. The only question now is... Are you able to fix this? I can try. Not the most encouraging answer, but we'll make it work. Scratch. The dark presence inside Casey. It threw Saga into the lake. If she ends up in the dark place, she could be there forever. It took me 13 years to get out. Zane never did. Tor and Odin went in after her, right? Maybe they'll get her out. With the power of rock and roll. I saw them when I was trapped there. They performed in my musical. I'm immediately less optimistic about this. What's the situation? I've never seen an entity break a bureau containment unit like that. And now the Dark Presence is occupying Agent Casey? When it attacked him in the woods, it must have been preparing for this. And now he has the clicker. Scratch will go to Bright Falls and use the clicker to bring about the horrific ending he wrote for Return. But I can still fix this. How? Scratch must have the manuscript. If I can read the ending, I can rewrite it. I need to go after him. <sighs> well, you won't get very far without these. This plan is a real Hail Mary wake. I wish I could help, but this is all on you. I got you every kind of weapon we have available. Don't fuck it up.
I was awake again, clear-headed for the first time in what felt like a lifetime. I was back exactly where I left. A dark forest outside Bright Falls. A gun in one hand, a flashlight in the other. Haunted by my own writing. Alice taken from me. I knew what I had to do. Stop the horror story from coming true. Stop the dark presence. General dark place, the dark presence went into me. When I was pulled back here, crossing over weakened it, made it dormant. I couldn't remember what had happened, but I could feel it, getting stronger, waking up. I thought it was haunting me, closing in. It was inside me the whole time, and then it took over. It turned me into scratch. I had to get to Bright Falls. I brought Saga Anderson into this story to help me escape. She succeeded. It cost her everything. I'd used Alex Casey in my writing for years. The real Casey had been drawn here because of that. Now he was a victim too. Saga, Casey, Alice, all this horror originates from me. It's my fault. Scratch had to be stopped. I've driven down this road before. Been driving on it forever. If Scratch had brought the dark place here, this would take me back inside. In 2010, I dived in, a leap of faith for Alice, with no idea that the cost would be a nightmare worse than death. It had taken me 13 years to get out. Now Alice was dead, because of me. 
And I was going to make that leap again, this time knowing the cost all too well. Another way to look at it? I had brought the dark place here with me. I never had gotten out. Maybe after this I finally could. It was a fool's hope. I had no choice. I had to do it. That didn't make me any less terrified. Fuck it. This is not what I expected. A spellbinding tour de force. The novel begins as a murder mystery that pulls the rug out from under the stage fight scene in Departure is one upped by the absolutely mind-frying Dark Ocean Summoning. Where do I sign up to live at the Valhalla Mystical? Saga and Casey will go down as literature's best law enforcement duo. <laughs> the Salt Shaker story had me rolling on the floor. Mm -hmm. I'm Koskela, and welcome to the Koskela Brothers Book Club. This week, we will review the highly anticipated new novel by Alan Wake, Return. Return is printed on a firm, high-quality, white offset, uncoated paper stock, making every page a true delight to turn in your fingertips. Alan Wake's brilliance is on full display with his choice of a hardcover book jacket made of a premium enamel stock with gloss lamination that is both tasteful and pleasant to the touch. Isn't that right? Wake set a high standard with his previous novels, but I can say without hesitation that Return contains the best and most compelling book description on a back cover that I have ever read. This book blurb is truly riveting and will keep you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. It is accompanied by a tasteful photograph of Alan Wake's home here in Bright Falls. The book weighs one pound and three ounces. Return is a true masterpiece. I'll give it a perfect score of five Alma beers out of five. How about you? There you have it. Alan Wake has done it again. This was the Costco Brothers Book Club. Cheers. I needed to get a copy of Return. I needed to read the ending to have a shot at changing it. I was inside Scratch's ending, a perverse version of reality. The townspeople brainwashed. Everyone and everything revolved around Return, as if it had just been published. Setting the trilogy's exciting conclusion at Deerfest. Oh, Lake's Return, a genre-bending mixture of facts and fiction. the round windows of the writer's room in the photo. That's where I had to go. To rewrite the ending of Return. Sick, sick story. I could get out through the back. 
I had the book now. I could write my ending to return. I had to get to the writer's room to stop this horror story. This was an obsessive, egocentric nightmare, all revolving around a vain monster of a writer and his final divine work of art. The novel returned come true. It wouldn't stop here. It would keep spreading. I had to find another way inside. What was that? Alice was dead. Was this a trap? Or was Scratch torturing me? the diner how are you here <laughs> i'm here to save you silly i got your instructions i found every hidden message you left for me in the radio in the wind in the forums on my alan wake fan site what no rose i haven't been leaving you any messages oh i get it yes alan only a crazy person would think you've been leaving them secret messages <laughs> wink but now you need to get your butt upstairs, Alan. This shit won't write itself, no matter what William Shakespeare said. Right. Thank you, Rose. I'll do what I can. Upstairs. The writer's room must be in the attic. That's where the windows were. We'll loop around and come to Keter, Tom. I have put everything ready for the visitors. I'll come to wash the floor of your room next. All you need is water and Vileda. 
Water is the oldest pulp. Water finds its way. What water brings, it takes away. It can be clean or dirty. It can give life or drown it. Akti. I didn't expect to see you here, but it makes sense. Can you help me find my way? One last time. Mm, now there's a devil in the fist trap. Don't be spooked by it so that shit won't start beating your underpants. Okay. I'll get the door open for you, Tom. There you go. I was here. I needed to write the ending. I only had one chance to get this right. Return's ending was an eternal deer fest that would keep spreading. Given time, Scratch would plunge the world into his nightmare. I had to stop that from happening. I had to write one more chapter for Return. I needed an ending that took everything already in Return and extended it into a conclusion that would save us. Only the perfect ending would work. A perfect ending that would save us all. I was the only one who could write it. Everything depended on this. On me. Any second now, Scratch would burst through that door to stop me. Every plot thread dangled in my brain. It suddenly felt impossible. Something stirred in the room, coming to me. An idea. The ending has to fit the genre if it's going to work. In a horror story, there's only victims and monsters. If there is Aero, they will ultimately pay a heavy price. I won't let the horror story take Logan and Casey. They were dragged into this. They need to survive. Non-negotiable. Not just them. We need to try to save everyone. The ending will have to be dark no matter what. The more people we save, the greater the cost. And the hero must pay the price. The scales always need to balance. Something felt different. I'd never seen myself in a vision before. But it fit. Saga and I were both at the center of this story. She was now my co-author. This was the beginning of the end. We were characters in a horror story, charging blindly towards the finale. We still didn't have everything we needed. This would not work without the clicker. What's going on? Am I in the field office? No. It's the mine place. Where is everything? My work. It's all gone. What the hell is happening? Nothing's working. I can't think straight. I can't sense anyone. I can't leave. Why can't I leave?
The dark presence took over Casey, stole the clicker from me. The last thing I remember is him throwing me into Cauldron Lake. I'm in the dark place. I'm lost. I don't know how to get out. I don't know what to do. That wasn't me. Was it? What? Failed who? What's happening to the case board? The board says I failed them. Who's them? I let everyone down. Logan, Casey, myself. This is my fault. My daughter is dead. My partner was taken over by a monster. I'm trapped in a dark place. Powerless. I'm not powerless. What is happening here? This isn't me. Casey. Casey depended on me, and I let him down. I wasn't watching his back. I got wrapped up chasing the wrong lead. He needed me. Now he's turned into a monster. He needed me. Logan. I neglected my family for my job. I was too thrilled by the cases. The mysteries. I liked how dangerous the work was. And now that danger has destroyed my family. It killed my daughter. No. I am a terrible mother. I let my daughter die. Scratch took Casey, and it's my fucking fault. I'm a failure. This is what I deserve. The story. My life, my family is just part of a book. Another white asshole deciding what I get to do, how I get to do it. He took my daughter from me. I'll never be free of this story from him. He used her. She's not dead. God damn it. I'm done with this. It just keeps coming back. Something's very fucking wrong here. It's so dark here. Casey was being corrupted, and I did nothing. Scratch was wake. How could I miss the- What is this? This isn't... What? I never should have trusted these. Night Springs. Logan and David love that show. Their weekly ritual.
what's happening. Why is this happening? Scratch. He's using Casey now. Like he used Wake. It feels like I'm trapped in a nightmare. Stuck in an echo chamber with all my fears, my doubts, my insecurities. I spent too much time away from Logan. I've had what you call this maniac. I never should have left Casey at the hotel by himself. Logan, the horror story used her. The cult was just the beginning of the spiral. What the hell? What's happening to me? That's not... No. Come on! It was so obvious the Koskala brothers were behind the cult. He was hurt. I should have been watching his back. This case. This room. Is any of it even real? I hate this, but it's all true. I had tried to silence these thoughts. Focus on the case. But I can't escape them anymore. I'm drowning. I need a way out before I'm dragged under. No, no, no! Shit! No. There has to be a way out. I need a way out. Oh god. None of this is real. I've lost it. I'm not even here. The mind place isn't real. A case about supernatural darkness. I'm having a full-on psychotic break. I dragged Logan away to a tin can in Watery. She's dead because of me. There has to be a way out. I need a way out. It's over. There's no point trying. Everything is lost. There's no way out. No way to fix this. There's no way out. I'm stuck here forever. Just me and my past. My guilt! My mistakes! I'm not getting anywhere. I'm stuck. But this is my mind place. My mind. Everything I need is here. It, it has to be. The lights! No. No. I'm not giving up. Focus, Saga. The answers I need are here somewhere. I just have to look. Scratch was too much for us. I should have made KC stay behind. Never should have taken this case.
Hey mom, I made you a charm bracelet for good luck. I made a matching one for me, so bring me back something cool from Washington. No, I'm not reading anymore. to say thanks, thanks for your note. Your note. Oh, sometimes, sometimes I just, I just get, get in my head, in my head too, too, much. too much. So, so thanks for pulling me out. out. You're, You're really, really the best, really best mom. mom. Really. really. Okay. okay. Talk soon. Talk soon. Anderson, uh, look, look, after Brand left, it was, uh, well, I was in a, was in a bad, bad place. place. You dragging me to those dinners at your house with your family, uh, it really uh, meant a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Self Anderson. A knife in the arm is just, just part of the job. If you're gonna keep fussing, you can get the hell out. But uh, leave the whiskey. I am honored by this award. Thank you. While our agency must continue to improve, the work we do here. Protecting communities, pursuing the truth. It's the most important work there is. I can't let this place make me question myself. I know what I'm doing. I dare what I'm doing. God damn it! Our job is dangerous. Casey himself told me that. It's not too late. I can still save them. No matter what I do, someone will get hurt. I don't know what to do. I'm afraid. I'm my own worst enemy. The fears in my head are stopping me from trying. From leaving. I can't do this. No. This is all real. I know it is. The FBI will kick me out. I'll have nothing. Fuck, no! Logan isn't anyone's plot device. She's my daughter. And she's not dead. Dead! She is dead! I didn't save her. God damn it! I saw this online and it made me think of you. Okay, what are you doing? Don't make a big deal out of it, Mom! No hugs, no hugs! It's okay to be afraid, but I can't let this end here. I can't, I can't, I can't! I just, I just want it to stop! Giving up won't make this stop. Logan needs me. Casey needs me. I've made mistakes. 
I'll make more. But I can do better. And I can start by leaving this room. I'm afraid... it will hurt. But nothing will hurt more than not trying to save them. It will hurt. But I will fight. The Dark Place tried to trap me here. The only way to leave is facing it head on. Wake called it a nightmare. I need to dive into that nightmare and find a way back home. The payphone was ringing. Somehow I knew the call was for me. Hello? It's me again. You need to go to the statue of Parliament Tower Plaza. To make your ending come true, you will need what's inside the shoebox there. The ending? A shoebox? Who is this? Agent Anderson. Is that really you? Sorry, this place likes to play tricks. Sheriff Breaker? What happened to you? How did you end up in the dark place? I was brought here. Snatched away from the morgue by a man named Orland Dorr. Been trying to piece it together for... Well, it feels like a long time now. Who is this door person? He's here. Somewhere. I've been seeing his face in my dreams for years. 
This whole thing is insane. But he is much more than he seems. He's connected to all of this. I need to get to Parliament Tower Plaza. Do you have any idea where it is? This place, it's like trying to find your way around in a dream. I've been trying to map it, but it keeps looping, shifting. Like, there were many versions stacked on top of each other. There is a page. Describes Dor finding his way through this place. I tried to follow the steps, but... No luck. Can I see that page, Tim? Of course. In fact, it's the page I tried to give you back in the morgue in Bright Falls. Huh. Now that I think about it, maybe Dor brought me here to keep you from reading it. Here. I'm gonna keep looking for Dor. The closer I get, the closer I feel to waking up. I need to find the man behind the curtain. Warling Dor walked across the rain-slick tiles of Caldera Street Plaza. He stopped at the door to the construction yard. A poster for his talk show hung there. He stepped through, willing it to take him to Parliament Tower Plaza. I know what I need to do. The door to Parliament Tower Plaza was at the construction yard. I made it. I need to get up to the street and find that statue. Enough already. There's the shoebox. The clicker. And some kind of bullet. Shining a light. How did the clicker get here from Washington?
The phone again. Yes? Hello. Uh, you don't know me, but you need to listen. Hold on. How did you know the clicker would be there? This is important. Alan's lost. He doesn't have the ending. He needs your help to finish the story. How am I supposed to help him from here? Okay. I'm in the dark place. Wake is in Washington. I could talk to him in overlaps before. My mind place is more powerful than I ever knew. I can try to contact him. This is the first time I've seen a page about Warlandor. Who is he? A door that stands between two rooms is in both. A door that can lead anywhere is everywhere. That door is the center. He governs the currents of reality. With all the powers mixed up in this, it's hard to know who's playing who. Opening too many doors. This isn't important right now. I can look into it later. The page describes him moving through the door. How can I do that? The dark place has many faces, and many names. It is a mirror, reflecting all possible realities. The family of doors have the power to shift between these realities. Here, and elsewhere. If I can find a way to navigate through this nightmare, maybe I can find a way to get back home. Alan. We need to talk about the ending. Saga, what is this? My mind place. I've reached out to you like this before. But I understand more about it now. You see a visions too. I used to think they were ideas, inspiration, but they're real. Just like this now. I try to use them to make the story come true. So this is coming from both of us. Maybe that's how we could communicate in the overlaps. We could use this to stop Scratch. First, I need the ending. So there's a problem with the ending? I don't have the ending. It has to be perfect, but I don't have time to figure it out. I don't know what to do. Fuck. I'm so sorry. This whole thing is a fucking mess. I agree. But we can still figure this out. And what exactly does perfect mean? The elements of the ending need to come from the story's pre-existing parts. To make matters worse, this is a horror story. You don't need to tell me this is a horror story. Right. The ending has to fit the genre if it's going to work. In a horror story, there are only victims and monsters. There must be a way to bring a hero into the story. If there is a hero, they will ultimately pay a heavy price. So the ending has to be earned, set up by the story. You can't build a case without supporting evidence. That's the only way to make it stick. I can't let the horror story take Logan and Casey. They were dragged into this. They need to survive. Non-negotiable. 
Not just them. We need to try to save everyone. I have an idea how to help Casey. He's a real person who I twisted into a character. He isn't my creation, so he isn't a suitable host for the Dark Presence. I can write that into the ending to drive that fucking thing out of it. Well, if the ending has to fit the story, this is how I see it. Return is a story about a story that comes true. And I'm a character in the story. Not just a character. The hero. Okay, a hero. <laughs> in any case, I've been through hell to be here. And this is my life. It feels earned to me that I rise above the story and be there to create the ending. Yes. That's what we're doing. Here, now. We're figuring out the ending I need to write. This isn't Scratch's ending. But this isn't your ending either. This is our ending. You aren't the only one deciding these things anymore. You're right. I can't do this alone. Every time I write, things only get worse. You beat this thing back in 2010, Alan. And here you are doing the same again. You're a hero too. We're in this together. Then let's bring it home. The ending will have to be dark, no matter what. The more people we save, the greater the cost, and the hero must pay the price. One of the heroes. The scales always need to balance. <sighs> Fuck it. Let's go with this. Are you sure? There's no time for anything better. Scratch could be here any second. Then that's our ending. I have the clicker. I'll find a way to get it to you. And I'll get the pages down. See you on the other side. Saga, I finished it. The ending we talked about. I have the clicker. 
and the bullet of light. Let's do this. I have to be the one to do it. I feel like I've always been on this journey. Okay. It must end here, this darkness. What lies under the surface now shifts. A play of shadows catching my eye, thrusting my face into the water. He's here. It's shockingly cold. Past the mirror of the surface. And I will see. Hey, see? The end. Scratch! Now! light of truth that for a flash pierces the shadows and reveals the hidden horror. And in that moment of silence, the whispered message finally heard. What if there's nothing waiting to be revealed? The play of shadows fool us all, subterfuge to get our price of admission. Darkness not as a monster, but as emptiness. We're none the wiser. No answers, no truths. The hero turns to look inside. It's destroyed by what he sees, and is redeemed. Saga said we're both heroes. I'll pay that price. So will she. We are here to kill the monster. I pray nothing comes after this. Nothing will sleep. This is how we win. Is it too easy? What if this is still the dark place, another dream to wake up from, always coming back to the beginning? The memory of what came before burned away by this terrible realization. Maybe it's a mercy, forgetting, to know nothing when we loop around, back to the... is just for you after the haunting started I got in touch with an organization that was still looking into what happened in Bright Falls I went to their offices and something happened there after I got home I could suddenly remember everything I remembered being trapped inside that lake a dark ocean with with Echoes of myself, my, my, my fears, my photos, inside a dark tide of, of madness, the same events and images looping again and again. And then I saw a light, your light. You dove in just as I swam out. You never drowned. And you're still there reaching out. That is what the haunting is. I can see you because I've been there too. I chose to come back to the dark place. That is why I put on this exhibition. I had to mislead you so that I could get you to where you needed to be. The only way out of your loop is destruction or ascension, light or dark. And we've covered the destruction part many times over. And we're getting to the ascension bit by bit. Time means nothing here. You'll still need to go through the loop. But I will keep showing you the images you need to see, the light you need to see, until you're ready. Ellen, I think we're getting close. <gasps> it's 
not a loop. It's a spiral. A fan. The dictionary definition of the word is an enthusiast, a fervent devotee, an abbreviation of fanatic. What comes across to an outsider as a dangerous obsession or even madness is something entirely different from the point of view of the fan herself. To be a fan is a joyous existence, one filled with the happiness that stems from knowing with utter clarity purpose of your life. But what if that purpose could be more still? If you could be lifted out of the flock as your idol's chosen one, the only one who could decipher his secret messages, <laughs> what lengths would you go to save the object of your obsession in Night Springs? Tonight's cult classic episode Number one fan. Life's a funny thing. You spend all your time wishing and hoping and dreaming for something, and then, bam, destiny shows up at your door like a mailman with a package you were pretty sure got lost because you ordered it like six months ago. <sighs> but that's okay. When your destiny has eyes like sunsets and a beard like mahogany-colored velvet, you don't really mind how it arrives. But my day didn't start off with all that excitement. It began like any other day did for this waitress slash protector of the town of Night Springs. As always, Night Steiner was the hottest spot in town, so there was plenty of work to do. Hey, it's everyone's favorite waitress. What's going on? Hi, everyone. Could I get another cup of that delicious special brew that only you know how to make? Of course. Who else wants a top up? Me. Right here, please. One for me, please, and thank you. Here's your coffee. How do you juggle running this diner, your bird century, and that amazing fan site for the writer you love so much? Here you go. A person of your genius and grace is wasted serving coffee to us regular Joes and Joanne. Oh, I don't mind. Hot coffee. I heard your fan site for that rider was named best fan site in the world. Congratulations. Another cup. I would kill to have a passion like you do for that rider of yours. You two are destined for each other. <laughs> we sure are. That's everyone's coffee. Better put this pot back. I loved being the very successful owner and operator of the county's most popular diner. But that was nothing compared to my grease fire of passion for the writer and his sheer literary talent and flowing hair and lips like buttery pie crust. Pie! I need to clear the empty pie plates from the tables. Shucks! The writer lives just outside town in that mansion of his. Why don't you go talk to him? <laughs> oh. We have our own ways of talking. I saw in the news that you saved every single kitten from that bear attack. Amazing. Thanks. 
Those yoga lessons really paid off. Is Knott Steiner going to enter the statewide pie competition this year? Of course! We're gonna make this our 20th win in a row! My date last night was a total bust. You're the expert on romance. Any advice? Yes. But first, tell me everything. Long story short, she told me I dressed like a divorced gym teacher. But it's what's inside that matters, right? Right. Show them the real you and it will all work out. Talk about that mole you worry about when you're trying to fall asleep. Well, I'll try that. Thanks a million. <laughs> Don't mention it. What can I get you? Oh. <laughs> I need a good book recommendation. After all, you're the town's literature buff. <gasps> oh, you have got to read the newest book in the writer's crime trilogy. <sighs> I'll grab you a copy from the back. any pages. It's me, your favorite writer whose voice you would recognize in your sleep. I'm in danger. Please, my number one fan. You're the only one who can save me. Oh, oh my gosh. Don't worry. I'm on my way. My beloved writer was in terrible danger, and I had to rescue him. The stakes had never been higher. Luckily, I kept all my accessories in the diner's kitchen. My accessories. Everything a girl needed to claim victory in the battle for love. My bolt-action hunting rifle with a gorgeous walnut stock. Deadly. And looks good doing it. <laughs> Just like me. My trusty 12-gauge. Fully automatic. Extreme circumstances call for extreme shotguns. I was finally ready for a night out on the town. With danger. The boatyard is this way! You better hurry! Go through the boatyard! This was my moment. My chance to save the rider and make him realize how much he needed me. And if that's not love, I don't know what is. Run the diner while you're gone! We'll be way worse at it! I was leaving my old life behind, like a body left to sink in a lake so no one finds it. Nothing would get between me and my future with the writer. You. Who are you? And why do you look like a slightly less handsome version of my writer? Oh, don't you ever compare me to that worthless hack. 
Sure, I may be his wild and rebellious estranged twin brother, but we can't all be perfect. I had no idea he had a brother. To think there were two of him all this time. After today, there won't be. No more writer, no more books, no more living in his shadow. But you're his brother! I'm sure you two can talk it out and realize you have so much in common, and after you change, you can move in together. And I'll come over with popcorn for movie nights! He had his chance for popcorn and movie nights, but he wanted to keep everything for himself. Too bad. You know what they say. If you can't join him, beat him. What did you do to him? I locked Mr. Fancy Pants up somewhere you'll never find him. You won't get away with this. I'll stop you. Babe, I got an army of people that hate that hack almost as much as I do. They're ready to die if it stops him from writing another crappy book. What do you got? I have the power of love! Oh, is that right? Well, you're gonna need more than your feelings if you want to stop all of us. A monster could be blind to the poignance of my writer's books. My writer's jerky twin had him locked up somewhere, like a sweet, helpless thing locked in a tower. His fan in shining armor was on her way. Luckily, one of those haters had made a hole in the fence for me. motorcycle had left tracks in the mud. I recognized the tread pattern immediately, thanks to my famously keen perception. The tracks would lead me right to my writer and his kidnapper. I felt like the detective from my writer's books, solving the case with my wits. All I needed now was an unlimited supply of black coffee and crippling emotional trauma caused by the untimely death of my spouse.
more haters. writer ever told me he had a semi-evil twin brother he must be waiting until our third or fourth date surrounded by candles so he could reveal this vulnerable chapter from the dramatic story of his emotionally troubled past oh that man has more layers than a croissant The motorcycle tracks ended at a cabin. Was my rider inside? Hello? Isn't anyone gonna rescue this poor little rider? Hello? If anybody there, I'm just a frail rider and I require aid. <gasps> He's inside! and sit through big poetry readings and drink $18 cocktails and have high tea with the queen. Wait a minute. My rider only drinks coffee. Two sugars, no milk. I keep all the mugs. Okay. No more tricks. I'll be waiting upstairs. Running with wolves seems like a dangerous hobby. Hmm. I guess riding doesn't run in the family. Where are you? I was never upstairs. I lied when I said there were no more tricks. Ooh, you're starting to peeve me off, mister. Where is my writer? I'm just having a little fun. Let's chat down at the beach. It's just out the back. First, he kidnaps my writer. Then he calls him a tea drinker? 
He had crossed the line. I was going to go to that beach and give this jerk the scolding of a lifetime. The twin said he was down at the beach. We're just enjoying the view. Where is my writer? What do you even see in that crybaby? He's boring, he dresses like a nerd. Hush he's... your mouth! He is a stylish intellectual who is in touch with his feelings. You're starting to cramp my style, babe. And I'm not telling you where he is. <gasps> what did he ever do to you? I, uh, already told you that? At the boatyard? I feel overshadowed by success, like he's taken everything I can compete. Oh, right. I remember now. It's a self-confidence thing. Uh, w well, it's a bit more complicated than that. You are going to tell me where he is, or else. Or else what, babe? You asked for it. You are rude, you have no manners, your too-cool-to-care attitude is attractive initially, but drives people away after they realize you're emotionally incapable of letting your walls down to reveal that you are a vulnerable human being just like everybody else. You are trying way too hard with that outfit. You... No, stop! I don't like being seen! Listen, I never had your precious writer. I was just keeping you distracted while my army of haters storms his mansion. Now the love of your life is doomed. Doomed! Ha 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 perception. to get to my rider's mansion as fast as my chunky kitten heels would take me.
I knew you, my number one fan, would never fall victim to my twisted brother's lies. His hatred for me is as inexplicable as the sunrise. And just as fiery. But I knew your heart would never waver. You're the only one who can save me. I believe in you. My writer believed in me. We were kindred spirits. We fit together like a bicycle chain and that spiky wheel thing the chain fits into. We were connected by love and destiny. He was meant to be mine, always and forever. There was no time to lose. I was the only one who could save the writer and the very soul of literature from these evil haters. The fate of all art rested on my shoulders. The stakes had never been higher. If I have to stop you myself, I will. Unlike him, I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. <laughs> going to kill you? You're my darling writer's brother. You really do love him, huh? I guess I never even had a chance. I was just jealous of his talent, his money, his velvety hair, but mostly that he's got the love of somebody as amazing as you. Oh, you silly werewolf. You could have all those things too. You just need to stop wanting to be him, and start wanting to be you. Your words have shown me that it wasn't my brother I hated. It was myself. Oh, what have I done? Those haters will tear him apart, and it's all my fault. Please, go save him. Oh, I intend to. Hold on. I need to film 
my gun up. I ate my spinach this morning, so don't let me. Bullets o'clock. to kiss himself. I mean, save himself. And there he was. After all the fighting, we were finally alone, together. Our love was written in the stars, and so we danced like two spinning planets that would eventually crash into each other in a dazzling display of flames and rocks and other planet stuff. He told me all the sweet things I'd been waiting a lifetime to hear. I saw myself reflected in his eyes. I would always be at his side. To inspire and protect him. He needed me, now and forever. After all, I am his number one fan. A fan? And the object of her joy come together against a world trying to keep them apart. A happy ending for some. But is happiness like beauty, all in the eye of the beholder? Where is the line between fandom and fixation? One can never tell in Night Springs. to save a missing loved one. Desperately trying to stay one step ahead of the shadowy government agents hunting her. Agents from the very same agency that took the only person she cares about. On her quest, she is guided by her mysterious alien guardian angel. Her guiding star shows her the way, as it always has. She does not know what strangeness awaits her as she follows its unwavering light to the small town... Springs. Tonight's dreamlike episode, North Star. This is gonna get strange. There's no helping it. The universe is much deeper and weirder than people know. My brother and I know. We've seen it. We've seen you, but there are some people 
An agency that doesn't want anyone knowing more than what they see. That's why they took my brother and have been chasing me my whole life. But I can't keep running. You think something here is important? What, the numbers? I've never been able to track down the government agency that took my brother. Until now. You helped me find this place. Now you'll help me get him back. Right? Hello? Is anybody here? What the fuck are those? need a welcome center. The gazebo? You think... Ma'am! Here! Get inside the light! Oh, they don't like the light. You shouldn't be here. How did you even get inside? Shit. A cop. Should I lie? I... kind of let myself in. You got more than you bargained for, huh? What's going on here? What are those shadow... people? Well, that's what I'm here trying to figure out. The government's been putting something in the coffee. Turning people into coffee monsters. The government? Is this the same government agency that's been chasing me all these years? Something in the coffee is doing this? Really? It took me a while to wrap my head around it, too. At first, I thought... Well, I don't know what I thought. But now it's clear. This is deep state science. I'm... looking for someone. My brother. Have you seen anybody? Well, only if you count those monsters. I'm sorry, ma'am. They've been abducting people from Night Springs, too. I'm here to get them back home. But now it's time you've left. It's not safe here. I'm not going anywhere until I find my brother. I respect that. There's a warehouse just past the park. It's locked up tight, has some fancy government security system, but the intercom is busted. I figure that's where they're keeping our missing folks. There's a, a spare pistol and flashlight on the bench. I'd feel better if you took them. Those monsters don't do well with light. And whatever you do, do not drink the coffee. This should make things easier. Let's check out that warehouse the sheriff mentioned. You still with me? Good to hear.
This must be the warehouse. How do I get inside? Hi, uh, I need to get inside. Please, insert passkey. Sorry, I... lost it. Please, insert passkey. Oh, fucking machine. Passkey, invalid. Do you submit to security questions for authorization? Sure. What's the question? Please recite the fourth word of Dark Triangle Coffee's mission. What kind of question is that? That is incorrect. Coffee? That is incorrect. Guess we need to find that orientation video. The security system oh, wants some kind of password to get into the warehouse. So you got it working. I wonder why it wouldn't turn on for me. What did it ask for, exactly? It asked for the fourth word of the Dark Triangle Coffee mission statement. Any idea what that is? Of course, it wants you to watch the video. The info you're after is on a videotape. But it is chock full of government brainwashing. I watched a bit of it. It was doing something to me. It's dangerous. You can't watch that tape. I need that videotape, Sheriff. Well, this is exactly how they get you. But fine. 
If you really want it, I hid it in the Ferris wheel, cup number four. You'll need this key. Don't say I didn't warn you. You up for a movie? Dark Triangle Coffee is a fast-growing company with ambitions to sweep the nation, and eventually, the globe. With our out-of-this-world beverages. Drawn by our coffee's distinctive flavor and our unique beans, people are rushing to join the Dark Triangle Movement. The company's mission statement is simple. To drink the truth there. is to become That's what we need. one. Password is Our financial truth. and spiritual growth now has we been can operating at speeds previously hey, unknown to humanity. Something Soon is... everyone will be coming to save you. Something is... Oh, in my head. Please, you need to... Drink. what we needed. The fourth word of the mission statement. Truth. Let's get back to that warehouse. That video was doing something to me. If you hadn't been there, what would have happened? What is this agency trying to do here? Control people? But why? What's their plan? What if my brother has already been... No. I didn't come all this way to lose him now. 
I've seen in our orientation video. Truth. That is correct. Further verification required. Please recite the optimal roasting temperature for dark triangle coffee beans in Fahrenheit. 487. That is correct. Further verification required. Oh, come on! Try the coffee. I tried the coffee. Worth a shot. Try the coffee. That's gonna be a problem. But I can't stop now. You'll keep me safe. Right? nothing. I'm trusting you. Huh. That wasn't so... <gasps> I've loitered in enough coffee shops to recognize a roasting machine. Let's check this out. Are you alright, Sheriff? I heard gunshots. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I was looking for you when one of those things jumped me. Got a little bit of coffee in my mouth, but I spit it out. Should be fine. But listen. I figured something out. What did you figure out? Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, yeah, it's nothing. Those government bastards will never get me. <laughs> but it, it's not just the government. There's something else here. I, I, I don't know what it is, but it's... You need to get your brother and get out of here as soon as you can. Promise me. Yeah, I promise, Sheriff. Good. That's good. I'm just gonna catch my breath here a minute. I'm... <sighs> Try the coffee. I tried the coffee. Probably worth holding on to.
here. I brought you a coffee. Take it. Take it. Don't be real. Sheriff. Sheriff. How'd you get in here? Coffee time is family time. It's the it's best, best part of the day. Hey! Snap out of it! Coffee solves all your problems. It lowers heart disease and leads to higher life expectancy. Fuck. I'm so sorry, Sheriff. Oh, this is a nightmare. I need to find my brother. He has to be okay. What the hell? Have you ever seen anything like this? Conspiracy within a conspiracy. How can one expose a lie when the truth exists beyond our wildest imagination? Who can ever truly know how deep the rabbit hole goes in Night Springs? often look back and wonder, what if? What if the path not taken had in fact been our charted course? Would we be happier? Or are we, with our set of choices behind us, the lucky ones? And what if nothing would be different? What if for some of us, our destiny across the endless number of versions of ourselves has been defined and locked beyond any causality of circumstance, beyond the forces in any one reality, but across all realities. For one man, the magnetic pull of destiny is so great it breaks time and space. We join this lone operative, many versions of him in fact, as he chases his nemesis, a dangerous being known as the master of many worlds. Across the multiverse, across the many versions of a city that is always the same, yet always different. In Night Springs. Tonight's reality-bending episode, Timebreaker. No matter how many parallel realities I need to brave, how many lives, how many versions of me it takes, I will stop it, and I will come back for you, my love. Cut. Everyone, take five. Was that okay? I mean, I can do more. I can do less. Yes, yes, yes. Sean, I'm really happy. Let's talk. I love your instinct on this, but we can still push this further. Immerse ourselves into this story. Believe in it. 
Make it crazier, wilder. Ba 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 da da da. You wanted to talk? It's awesome to be doing this with you again, Sam. Sean, it's so good to have you back. We've been dreaming about this for so long, and now finally we are making Timebreaker, the video game. It's happening. Yeah, and FMV as well. That's so cool. Of course. That was part of the previous game as well. I'd like to talk about my character, just get deeper into the lore. Hey, I could talk about this for days. He's a multiversal agent, goes by many names as there are many versions of him. Breaker, Branch, others. He's searching for his lost love while his ruthless nemesis, Dor, the master of many worlds, is murdering versions of him across parallel realities. He must track down and stop Dor. That's so cool. You've done cool superhero roles in the past. Long term, the agent will grow into the ultimate iconic superhero. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So the Vortex and the Gadget, I'm, sorry, I keep forgetting its name. There's, there's just so many acronyms here, but it helps me travel through realities. Acronyms are cool, right? Like tiny mysteries. You power up your PRS, polyhedron reality shifter with a SEN shifter energy node to activate a LumiVista TV and ride the vortex between realities. It's all REC, Ripple Effect Corporation Tech. And you have a gun and a TPS, Time Breaker Solidifier, to defend yourself. <laughs> right, yeah. You clearly have your own vision um, of the multiverse. The right vision, the truth, it's all out there. That's where these ideas and inspirations come from. They seep through. Somewhere this year, us talking is part of the video game, and another version of you is playing it. Somewhere, your character, the agent, is real, and he could appear here through a portal any time now. Right. Yeah, yeah, right, Sam. <laughs> you are a maniac, man. Totally. Okay. So, um, what do we shoot next? We need to set up for the next scene, where your nemesis pulls you into a parallel reality. You can go to your green room, chill out, learn the lines. I left the latest draft of the screenplay for you there. See you in a bit. Cool. Can't wait. Sometimes it's hard to tell if Sam's joking. A deadpan Finnish humor. And a reputation of being a bit out there. I picked up a weird vibe when he talked about the multi- oh, this is your end. What the fuck was that? Hello? What the fuck is this? I thought I'd gone mad. Then I realized Sam was playing a crazy prank on me. There's no way this was real. Huh? What is this? I had to admire how real the body and the props looked. So we got another one of you, huh? Too late again. Excuse me? <laughs> no, th this is just, it's a prank. It's just a prank. Wait, are you? Shit. You're not Branch. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. <sighs> he finally got you. Are you cast in this game, too? Listen to me. There are things you need to know. You are in great danger. You must do exactly what I tell you. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? I blanked out and I was suddenly someplace else. 
I'd had gaps in my memory before. But that's the movie star lifestyle for you. This was something else entirely. The last thing I remembered was the red-headed woman at the door. She looked familiar. She was trying to tell me something, and then it went dark. It felt like a dream. Think, 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 man. I need to get out of here. A psychotic episode? Or was the multiverse true after all? Did Sam do this? An elaborate hoax? Off-the-wall, method-acting reality show? It had gone way too far. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's, let's go with that. Act like this is true. Okay. I'm an actor. I can do this. And once it's over, we'll have a good laugh. And then I will punch Sam in the face. <laughs> what had Sam said? I needed to find an energy node and use this rod thing with it, the PRS, was it? And look for some kind of TV to get the hell out of here. <sighs> no, no, no. Door's coming. He knows where I am. Full of goes out. It's coming. He knows about the trailer. I need to hide the energy. I need to get it away from the trailer. Away from the TV. No, can't. No. Oh my god. Oh my god. I wasn't certain this was a prank anymore. I heard a voice in my head. It sounded like me. Insanely, I heard the thoughts of another version of me. The one living here. The trailer was his. I'd check it out. Don't think. Just act. The handwriting was mine. Paranoid theories about the multiverse and door. The master of many worlds. The Luma Vista TV. According to what Sam had said, I needed the energy node. The other me had hidden it, away from this trailer. The energy node was out there in the forest, somewhere. I was wasting time. I had to go look for it. Okay, okay, I hit it. It's, it's, it's safe, it's, it's safe. The creek's deep in the forest, all the way at the waterfall. It's safe. Now get the fuck away from here before door zeroes it on me. I'll make it. I'm the chosen one out of all of the versions. Me, yes. Yes! He's hidden the energy node at the creek in the forest. I have to find it. Okay. I found the creek. So, where's the energy node? charged now. I had to get back to the trailer and the TV. video game. But it was all real. Door. Don't try anything! I've got a gun! It's all true. It's no hoax. No video game. It's really happening. I was lost in the multiverse. I had to become the role to survive. Be the agent. I had to get back to the trailer and the TV. Use my PRS on it. Dora would be coming for me next. I didn't want to face him. Fuck that. 
But I couldn't shake the feeling that it was inevitable. Use the PRS, the polyhedron reality shift on the TV to get out of here. I felt a strange pull from the vortex of the screen. in a different reality but not better worse maybe by thinking of door i traveled closer to him to where he was in control next time uh. i'd focus on something else uh. a luma vista tv i just needed energy to power no one a poison pill had mentioned they'd made a comic book of their game but then maybe poison pill didn't even exist in this reality I was in a comic book. <laughs> Funny. I couldn't hear the thoughts of the other me. The one native to this reality. Maybe Dor had killed him already. Not a happy thought. was broken here. The corridors led to the same lobby, but in different times. hotel was a strange place. It looped around like in a dream. Maybe there was logic to it. Finding the right route to get through. I had to find the right version of the lobby in the right time when what I needed was there.
PRS was charged up. Now I find my way back to the TV. When I used the TV to travel between realities, I was thinking of Dor. And the Vortex brought me here, where the Time Breakers attacked me. This time, a different tactic. I thought about the Red She knew things. If I could find my way Something was different. A strange feeling. Still, yet moving, like frozen snapshots on a sequential path. And yet, thoughts flowing free, like text read out loud. It's, it's you. I made it. Thor pulled you away. Thought you were gone, for sure. I focused on you when I entered the Vortex. I, I was trying to reach you. You are full of surprises. Okay. Let's try this out. Welcome to the headquarters of the Ripple Effect Corporation. We were making a video game of the multiverse, but now it's suddenly real? Real and not real exist side by side in the multiverse. Echoes flow through it like currents in a cosmic ocean, the sea of night. Conceptual, fictional, real, more real than real. Many versions of us all in hidden interaction, linked by the energies that ripple through realities. One of you is killed in an explosion of dangerous energy, and another one instead gains superpowers. And yet another one meets an alien guardian angel. In one reality, we're not even real. Or as you say, characters in a video game. Why is he after me? Who is Dor? There are legends about him going back further than we can trace. They say he found an opening to a horrifying parallel reality that consumed him, gave him access to all realities. The feedback loop killing all other versions of him. I am on the threshold. <laughs> We don't know why, but he sees the versions of you as a threat. He's killing them. Bringing them back as time breakers. We thought he was after Branch. Now I'm thinking he's been after you. Turn your minds. Take apart the master of many worlds. We came through the all right. What can I do? He must be stopped. 
He leaves dead realities in his way, and he is only picking up speed. I'm just an actor. You could have fooled me. You travel through realities with greater accuracy than anyone I've ever seen. Beyond door, even. You picked it up just like that. Finding the place that made him may be the key to killing him. That was our theory. But we could never find it. Maybe you can. Was there something between you and Branch? What you think you are feeling is just an echo. Some other version of us in some other lifetime. But maybe... You'll come back for me? <laughs> maybe. Wish me luck. Luck is just an echo of an event carried over from another reality. I was an REC agent. This was my mission now. I focused on him. The darkness, the entropy, Dor. The master of many worlds.
I've been brought to the very edge of the multiverse. Or some deep, dark trench in it. Everything sucked dry of color and energy. I had to find door, or the means to travel on. You should not be here. You made a mistake. <laughs> Go to hell.
We have witnessed a case of mistaken identity. But in the vastness of the multiverse, with an endless number of versions of ourselves, what is identity anyway? Can there be more than one master of many worlds? Or did our hero take a wrong turn somewhere along the way? Was this particular journey precisely what was needed to make him the one he was meant to become? One thing is certain. I am your host. The one and only Warland Dwar. And this is Night Springs. Chasing the murder cult made me feel like I was caught in a loop. Every time I thought I was getting closer, things shifted around, and I realized I was further away than ever before. Instead of answers, I only got more questions. The name of the cult and the masks they wore kept changing. The deeper into the dark depths I got, peeling off the layers of this case, like the ocean zones from twilight to midnight to abyssal to the deepest trenches, the closer I felt to going mad. This isn't the Bureau's first time in Bright Falls. 1970, 76, 8... Last one was in 2010. It's not exactly clockwork, but... This town sees way more altered world events than most. We knew it was just a matter of time before the lake acted up again. After the AWE in 2010, the FBC's research department set up a facility the lake house, to study the threshold in Cauldron Lake, find better ways to contain the entity inside. Your tax dollars at work. When we detected a spike in paranatural activity at Cauldron Lake, before I even knew you were on this case saga, the lake house was my first stop. I was shorthanded, hoped they could spare some help, maybe give us some intel on the situation. If I had any clue what was waiting for us in there, Saga, I'd have just kept on driving. This is Agent Kieran Estevez responding to an AWE alert in the vicinity. I need to speak with the Marmons. So much for the welcome wagon. You all set up the perimeter. We're on the threshold's doorstep, so keep your eyes peeled. Yes, ma'am. This shouldn't take long, okay? You see anything? Radio me. Roger that. The lake house was run by the research department. Research and investigations don't really see eye to eye. What they call science, I call a violation of bureau protocol and human decency. Classic interdepartmental drama, your FBI saga, you know how it goes. 
Now, in retrospect, my low opinion of the research department may have clouded my judgment. Hello? Agent Kieran Estevez, Investigations Department. No one wants to check the individual carrying a firearm into a restricted government facility? No? Okay, well, it was definitely going in the report. exciting day here at the Lake House. As I'm sure you know, I am Dr. Jules Marmont, and this is my wife. Dr. Diana Marmont. And together and we, we are, are the heads, heads of, of research, research at, at this facility. facility. We want to thank you all for helping us break new ground in our study of Cauldron Lake. That's right, Jules. But don't let our exciting work in threshold regulation and dimensional coupling keep you from observing the proper safety protocols. You said it, Diana. We run a tight ship here at the Lake House. So, always remember the three S's. Safety, security, and censorship. It's a C. It's a C. <laughs> yeah. That is the joke, Diana. Well, it's a stupid, wonderful joke, Jules. We'll see you down there. Yeah, that seems healthy. Dr. Marmont's not here. Nobody is? I'll have to check downstairs. An experiment? That bodes well. They must all be working on the lower levels. I'll need to head down. Changing passwords, huh?
This should come in handy. As soon as I got in that elevator, my bad news detector started going nuts. Estevez to team, something's going on in the lake house. I want all nearby agents to be oh, threshold event had hit the lake house. Now, it was the Marmont's problem. Our mission was outside. Where's the fucking elevator? <sighs> okay, okay. Priority one, get the lights on. <sighs> Standing around in the dark near Cauldron Lake, you're not smart? Okay, he doesn't do a damn thing without power. Dr. Darling. Power core receiver. Plugging a core in should get the lights on.
That is not a regulation FBC weapon. Can't open it from the side. Jules's key card could be useful. Things later. <sighs> the way I saw it, there was only one way out. Identify the source of the event and contain or eliminate it. Now, good news. I just had to keep going down. Bad news? The elevator liked to disappear. back. First off, a huge thank you to everyone here. Uh, the Lake House has made amazing strides in researching the AWE here at Cauldron Lake. Great work, team. I wanted to come in person so I, I could check in on the latest work. I, I, I won't get in the way. It's, it's not our view, so no reason to be scared. Did you hear that, Dr. Marmot? While I'm here, I, I, I want to focus on the relationship between the shadow and the AWE site below the lake. The theory that the shadow even originates from the dimension this threshold is tapping into is compelling. Eventually, I want to understand how this dimension manages to convert subjective elements like art into objective reality. What are the constraints of this phenomenon? Can it say, create altered items or even objects of power simply by manifesting them via a piece of art? These are the things we need to accurately classify the shadow. I mean, that, that name is not very scientific. I mean, who came up with that? Shadow. So, any and all proposals are welcome. Uh, anything testing art's effect on reality by using the shadow's energy is preferred. Uh, to find answers, we'll, we'll, we'll first need uh, a, a lot of data. No wrong answers. And when I return to the oldest house, I'll take back anything we end up with to run against a classified project called Hedron to build a comparative data set. I, I wish, I wish I could tell you more. It's a very, very exciting non-physical force. It's impacting. Oh, no, no, sorry, I, re I really can't. It is. You know what? Maybe some of you can come visit. We'll have to get you clearance, of course, but if that would, maybe that can. <clears throat> you know what? I, 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 I don't want to take the entire day talking, so 
The shadow represents a whole new area of research, and I, I couldn't be more excited to start digging in. It is a great new world, people. working. You never really get used to the shit you see in this job, but you can learn techniques to adjust, to function. Take six deep breaths, then get to work. Find the source, collapse the threshold. Please hold. Please hold. No, where am Please I? Hold. Please hold. What is that? I can assist you if you take no hostile action against me or any action that can be perceived as hostile. Do you understand? <laughs> Probably imprinted on a person or retain some of your former self's information. Previously human, maybe? Okay, I can work with that. I just had an unpleasant encounter with some other painted individuals. Any relation? What does that mean? Paint no brush a self-portrait! 
Okay, hey, hey, calm down. Fire in his eyes and hands and bones. You need to cease all hostility right now. <sighs> now. news? That thing is really pissed off. Good news. It didn't try to kill me. Maybe it stops. Angry living paintings are not typically on the Cauldron Lake bingo card. Something different was happening at the lake house, and I couldn't let it escape. Bright Falls didn't need this particular cherry on its already That's shitty Sunday. Rudolph Lane stood back from the canvas. He didn't recognize the piece. Did he paint this? His mind was foggy, unfocused. He knew the Marmots were putting something in his food. A man in a white coat came to steer Lane back to his cell. He did not resist. He was too tired. He lay on the bed, but the stench in his cell wouldn't let him sleep. An acid stink. The turpentine, the paint, it was all over him. Years of it, a thousand paintings, a thousand more to come. A putrid weight he could never wash away. Cold hate simmered below the mist clogging his thoughts. Hatred for the paint, hatred for the brushes, for the Mormons, for himself. Diana and Jules Marmont had once been a team. Rising stars in the Bureau, both talented in their own way. Diana innovated and Jules got funding from the bureaucrats. Cooperation led to respect. Connection. Then after a decade of hard work, the happy couple were promoted. Co-heads of research. Their first years at the lake house were good. Challenging, but not insurmountable. Not for them. Gradually, thoughts fell into their heads like drops of dark water. Why does she get all the credit? Why does he get any credit? With that, a crack formed in the lake house. The Marmonts and their work became arrogant, erratic. The crack widened and the water seeped in. September 12, 2023. Notes regarding a page of an Alan Wake manuscript I found in the archives. I checked the records, and this page is not in our inventory. I believe it manifested inside the lake house directly. I won't be filing this page. It'll just send Jules into a panic. The page is written in Wake's usual style, so I can't say for certain if it's being literal or figurative when it calls us monsters. What was interesting 
is that the page indicates that our painting succeeded in linking Cauldron Lake's threshold with our facility. Writing has always been a clearly superior avenue of research, but I never considered that the writing itself would dictate a different art form as a catalyst for our success. I cannot accept that. I can't allow Jules to stumble his way into success. Not after the years of work I put into this research. I got word yesterday that two writers are visiting Bright Falls. I will beat Jules to the finish line. had let the lake in, but the water could not flow. It became trapped, stagnant, went bad. The truth was controlled here. The art was not art, just content for the experiment. There was a crack in the lake house. The marmots had let the lake in. But the water could not flow. It became trapped, stagnant, went bad. The truth was controlled here. The art was not art, just content for the experiment. There was a crack in the lake house. The marmots had let the lake in, but the water could not flow. Please don't let this be what I think it is. As you know by now, typewriters and Cauldron Lake do not mix. And a room full of them all clacking away on 100% bad news. Notes regarding Dr. Emil Hartman, founder of the Cauldron Lake Lodge, where he manipulated artists in an attempt to control the power of the shadow. I've gone through his notes, which were confiscated by the Bureau after his arrest in 2010. 
Overall, Hartman's work was sloppy. Complete disregard for proper scientific method. But he was bold enough to try something we haven't. Our procedural writing machines are promising, but we could understand the effects of Cauldron Lake's threshold much better by observing live artists in action. Thanks to Hartman, we even have a list of prospects. Next step is to send Dr. Darling a request to bring some into the lake house for analysis. say no to extra firepower. Huh. Back where I started. Spatial recurrence. Usually observes the law of three. staff down there had been corrupted. Shit just kept getting worse.
Loop 3. Should be the last one. I keep coming back to this page. The author's clearly awake. It's like he's warning us. But about what? I mean, what does it mean? open without power. shifting phenomena.
you again. What happened to you? Did the people here do this to you? Mammons! Come in his head! Alan Wake's writing is being studied here. Do you know anything about him? Names don't matter. A thousand more to come. They say clear communication is the key to any relationship. You and I have some work to do there. You said Marmonts before. Do they do this? Where are they now? Misery! Fixated on the Marmonts. What did they do? Threshold is the connection between a foreign reality and our own. Now, they all have their own rules, strange as they are, but the further down I went, the more chaotic this one got. Clearly, this was the Cauldron Lake Threshold, but something was wrong. Well, more wrong than usual. Level-wide Level lockdown, lockdown in, in effect. effect. Please, Please remain, remain calm. Level-wide Level lockdown, lockdown in effect. effect. Please, Please remain, remain calm. Finally, someone who isn't a painting. Hey, hello. Who are you? <sighs> Sorry, I got a flow going. Can we do this later? No, we cannot. I'm Agent Kieran Estevez. I'm with the government, and I need your name. <sighs> I'm Ed Booker, the playwright. And I'm hitting my stride here, so can you guys stop with all that banging and screaming? It's throwing me off. Where do you think you are right now? In an immersive writing workshop. Well, bad news, it's not a writing workshop. Good news, it's not a writing workshop. Right. It's a government facility studying the power of creativity. That makes way more sense. 
What are you even doing? What are you writing? Well, after you all abducted me in the woods, uh, I've been working on this manuscript you gave me because you need it for some experiment or something. I kind of forget the premise. But, you know, I've had this block lately, and filling in the gaps of this story has really loosened me up. Copying the style is a nice constraint, but I still have lots of room to play. It's a solid, creative exercise. Look around you. How is this a workshop? You have to stay in character. I get that. I'm in a theater business, too. And look, the sets, the costumes, all great in that, you know, campy, 70s sci-fi kind of way. But you could dial down the role-playing like 15, 20%. Just some professional advice. Sir, whether you are aware of it or not, there is a situation here. I need you to stay in your cell until I can resolve the matter, okay? Uh-huh, got it. Hey, no one's been around with food for a while. I could go for some dinner when you have a second. Oh, and can I get my phone back? I want to call my wife. I don't know how Tammy found you guys, but she killed it. Five stars all around. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll get right on that. I wonder what happened here. Jules Marmont looked at the painting. He didn't understand it. Saw only random whirls of color. Drug and Lane made him more compliant, but his work had turned abstract. Jules needed more art his team could parse, could test, trial and error. These abstract explosions of color complicated the data. His grip tightened around the letter opener in his hand. The piece of art he needed was hidden inside Lane. If Jules could simply cut the painter open and pull the painting out of him, he would. The overhead lights flickered. Jules would make Lane cooperate. No more drugs. Less carrot, more stick. Jules had to go faster. He wouldn't lose to Diana. Nothing else mattered. Now, you love to paint, and you are such a talent. This is just a classic artist slump. No, no, I, I hate it. It's just taking from me now. When can I leave? You said you'd let me leave. Ah, oh, Rudolf, but you volunteered to come, remember? We are helping you, like Dr. Hartman did. Perhaps... You need to see our doctor? I can arrange that. No. No, that's... I am feeling better. 
Much better. I, I will paint. Ah, this is wonderful to hear, Rudolf. I knew you would come back to your old self. There's the elevator. How do I get in? Won't open while the floor's on lockdown. Access card. Sorry, but I need this. How many paintings do they have this guy make? Sub-level one. 
another thought today. A possible avenue for further research. When we think of art successfully affecting reality, we always think of Alan Wake and his writing. This could be due to recency bias or, or simply the amount of recorded evidence skewing our opinion. But also, I wonder if writing's very nature is an advantage. The text can describe events in such explicit detail. The story gives the shadow a, uh, how do you say, a blueprint, a map of what to make real. But not all art is like this. Uh, music, sculpture, dance, cuisine. In our case, a painting. When the source material is open to interpretation, how will the shadow choose to interpret it? I think Diana will find the question very interesting. Most likely, she already has an answer. <laughs> That's why I love her.
My team was on sublevel one. I knew they were in danger. Water dripped from the ceiling as Diana stared at the folders stacked on her workstation. Each one was a branch of research. Drip. Some were thin. Some thick. They represented years of her life. Her work. Dissecting the act of creation and examining the bloody pieces. Bringing in live subjects had been her idea. Drip. Bureau leadership denied their request. But after HQ went into lockdown, she took advantage of the chaos and got her artists. Jules had whined about the optics. Diana ignored him. Now in her office below the waterline of Cauldron Lake, she considered how to proceed. Jules was convinced the page they had found would come true. It promised disaster. A situation out of control. Impossible. Diana was always in control. Drip. Drip. She needed answers. She needed to quantify, to define, to control. team has found new pages written by Wake. He must have gotten Rudolph Lane painting again. This bullshit pedestrian methodology cannot produce results before mine. I have to go faster no matter the cost. We're still behind our projections. The more the machines can produce, the closer we can calibrate them to Wake's style. The proper calibration takes a lot of raw material, and production is slow. No, no. We're changing directions. The hypothesis remains unchanged. 
imitating Wake's writing style will allow us to generate art capable of linking with the threshold. Our live subject should match Wake's style much faster. People can be calibrated just like a machine. You simply have to push the right buttons. Bastard. No. Jules Marmont killed my team. He was taken by the shadow. I'm sorry. I should get that gun while I'm up here. Yeah, that that name is not very scientific. I mean, who came up with that? Shadow. Comes to my lab and treats me like some kind of assistant. A putain d'assistant? Moi? I run the lake house. This is my facility. Mine! He cannot just walk in here for one week, make some speeches, and then fly back to New York. Uh, espèce de crétin! Prétentieux! The jackass thinks he's a fucking rock star! And he made fun of the name. <laughs> oh, the shadow. The shadow is good. It's evocative. <laughs> he is 
just a jealous, spoiled little child. And I will make it so everyone can see this. I, I will make it so no one even remembers his name! To see, to see his imbecile, là, hein? They all think I am a, a pencil pusher. They think I do not have the mind for such work. Eh bien, ils verront. Ils verront! I will take what they think is possible. And I will break it. Okay, this should get me down to sub-level 5. And this should get me past any other problems. There was a crack in the lake house. The Marmonts had let the lake in, but the water could not flow. They became trapped. Stagnant. Went bad. The truth was controlled here. The art was not art, just content for the experiment. The contrived overlap rebounded on itself, compressing, compounding, reflecting, and refracting. An urban legend and a murder in constant imbalance, cause and effect hopelessly entangled, arranged wrong, the dream logic flawed. The feedback loop doubled and redoubled, out of control. The pressure kept building, looking for a release. Bingo. That key card's gonna get me to sub-level five. Bingo. That key card's gonna get me to sub-level five.
His shadow had changed Jules Marmont into a hostile, paranatural entity. That made everything simpler. No arrest, no paperwork. I could put him down like the monster he was. Error. Please hold. Please this is not hold. level four. Please hold. Please hold. The Marmonts were holding a painter here. Rudolph Lane. Does that ring a bell? The shape of a man! I think you are... or were... Rudolph Lane. Himself! A self-portrait! Make them see! I might be able to help you. But I need information, cooperation. No push! Just himself! <laughs> Rudolph Lane was dying. Both murderer and victim. Red hues ran down his hands. Was it scarlet or cadmium? Too vivid to be maroon. Names don't matter, he decided. Color was pure. Inspiring. For the first time in years, he wanted to paint. A self-portrait. To say goodbye. No. To make them remember. To make them see what they did. He slapped his hands against the wall to steady himself. He began from there. No brush. Just himself. The strokes were crude. Violent. The pain, misery, and hate he'd endured there. The fire in his eyes and hands and bones all spread into the shape of a man. It was quick. Natural. Like a heart attack. He slumped down to the floor, smiling at the anger he left smeared across the wall.
Diana sat in her office. A weak desolate kept the darkness around her at bay. The silence of the archive suited her. She scowled at a series of graphs when the room turned red, alarms blared, breach detected. Then the walls of the archives rumbled, a tremor in the bones of the facility. One by one, the red lights went dark as a wave of nothing poured in from all sides. Diana stood, but there was nowhere to run. The sheer depth of the darkness terrified her. She realized they had done this. Her and Jules, their ambition, their hatred. Her desk lamp flickered. In the brief moment before it all went dark, she thought of Jules' smile.
September 13th, 2023, notes regarding the concept of the tortured artist. A romanticized image of the sensitive artistic temperament, yes, but there may be truth in the cliche. It's no secret Rudolf Lane has been unhappy here for years, but uh, the aggregate data shows his art's viability score trending upward over time. If Jules hadn't neglected to hold regular psychological exams, then we could have quantified the subject's emotional state, creating a sort of distress rating to compare against the art score. I'll make this a sub-goal of my study of Edward Booker. Once we set the variables and establish a control reading of his art and mental state, then we can begin inducing negative emotion. Limited food and water, perhaps. An increasingly tight living space. This is how Jules lost his subject, though. You need to be careful not to leave any sharp objects in Booker's cell. The lake house was underwater. The Marmont's ambitions had finally been realized. Jules had dangled the painting like a lure and hooked an ocean. Their machines couldn't hold it. A fault in the system. The water rushed in, filled it until it was ready to burst. All their successes and failures had led them here. The work had made them into monsters. But the lake house was still theirs. It always would be. They could feel an outsider trespassing in their laps. I know you're here, they called out to the dark. They hunted floor by floor. They wouldn't let the intruders stop their progress. This was their home, their beloved tomb beneath the waves. experiment tomorrow. I can't find the details anywhere. That bastard is hiding them. All those years he steals credit well, from my this ideas doesn't look and like my style. work, and now he's Get scared of being plagiarized? Oh, that is really fucking rich, Jules. Oh, and he's reportedly misplaced the manuscript pages I need for my work. Suddenly, the exact pages that I need to reference have just vanished. He is actively impeding critical bureau research. I mean, if he can do that, then what is stopping me from going down to that lab? And I, and I don't know, just inverting the amplifiers or misaligning the receivers or both. 
It's the same thing in principle. He booked the lab. Some big experiment tomorrow. I can't find the details anywhere. That bastard is hiding them. A light switch cord. All those cord. years, he steals credit from my ideas and my work, and now he's scared of being plagiarized? Oh, that is really fucking rich, Jules. Oh, and he's reportedly misplaced the manuscript pages I need for my work. Suddenly, the exact pages that I need to reference have just vanished. He is actively impeding critical bureau research. I mean, if he can do that, then what is stopping me from going down to that lab? And I, and I don't know, just inverting the amplifiers or, or misaligning the receivers or both. It's the same thing in principle. Quick lesson on light switch cords. If you find Some one, pull it through times. I can't find the details anywhere. The Ocean View Motel is a dimensional intersection. The doors from the lobby can lead anywhere. But I didn't end up in the lobby this time, which was definitely unusual. Panopticon? But the Panopticon is at headquarters. Yeah. I'm outside in a forest. The sun is shining. Birds are calling. I feel dirt beneath my feet. A breeze. Everything smells like green. I'm not here. I'm in a forest. Sunlight on my face. Birds are flying past. Leaves rustle in the wind. In a forest. Agent Kieran Estevez, Federal Bureau of Control. Identify yourself. I'm... It's quiet. Who are you? It's been a long time since I've seen anyone. There's a sign over there for the Panopticon. The Panopticon's only in New York, in HQ. Is this the oldest house? I think that's where I am. So you are inside the oldest house. Is anyone else alive? I can't. This is a waste of time. This is an FBC containment unit. Why is the Bureau detaining you? I'm where I belong. Everyone I meet here is either a painting or a paracriminal. Hey, this is important. FBC headquarters went dark four years ago. What exactly happened in there? We were attacked. Was it true? It was that. 
No, no, not again. Not yet. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, stay with me. Stay with me. What attacked the oldest house? I need to know. Something's changing. Outside. Can you feel it? I can hear it. It's getting worse. You can't stay, can you? Hold on. I need to know if I can... Tell Jesse I tried. I really did. Is that really the oldest house? I felt wrong. He booked the lab. Some big kind of hell is anywhere. That bastard is hiding them. All those years, he steals credit from my ideas and my work, and now he's scared of being plagiarized? Lane was found dead in his cell this morning. It's uh, an unfortunate setback. But when a door is closed, a window is opened. I believe that's the saying. Lane may be gone, but he left us with a goodbye present. 
a finer piece of art. This piece is, uh, is different. It's raw emotion, pure truth. He, he, he put everything he had into this one. Literally. Uh, every reading we take is, is off the charts. This is what we have been waiting for. It is... It is the key. <laughs> I will achieve what no one has before me. Not darling, that arrogant shit. Not my selfish harpy of a wife. So, we have a painter and a painting that can talk. <sighs> Clearly connected. But Lane was dead before any of this even happened. I know nothing to do with any of it. The fools will finally see me for the genius I am. big experiment tomorrow. Door 
into Cauldron Lake's threshold. It was forced, it was unstable. Shutting the experiment down was the only option. stood in the forest just outside of Bright Falls. She watched her team detain Alan Wake and Ilmo Kazan, stumping them into black SUVs. She realized this was the moment Wake had been writing in the vision she had seen. The story was coming true. She pushed the thought out of her head. It had been a good tip, a way to find Wake. Nothing more. Alan Wake!
After the threshold event collapsed, I was back at Cauldron Lake. But for a moment, that was somewhere else. I saw Alan Wake there. He was writing about me finding him in Bright Falls, in the woods. It was a good tip. I called the surviving members of my team, and I told them to meet me there. You know, these cases... They never get less ambiguous... ...or easier. But this one... This, this was tough. Because protocol says entities like the Taken are monsters. Threats. But the Marmots were monsters way before the Shadow got to them. So at the end of the day... What's the difference? <laughs>